So, welcome. We're here talking to our buddies from the group, and uh, I'm Joe. Hey, I'm Lionel uh, from Cowboy Boots Hats and Western Life Enthusiasts. Hi, I'm uh, Clay, one of the moderators for the uh, American Enthusiast Group. All right, what are we wearing today, guys? I'm, I'm hoping everybody's wearing at least an American hat. Um, I am. I'm wearing my uh, 40X steel American. Nice. What are y'all wearing today? I'm a, uh, I'm a black sheep. I got a Lane Creek Custom 50X. All right, get the f*** out of here, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had my American straw right, well, on. I switched uh, to the panel. I got my American 7800 back here. At least, that's, so. that, that's right. Clay and I were both uh, wearing a 7800, and uh, he swapped it out. I could have gone and grabbed another hat. I mean, I mean, we can still do that. You, you know, you want to you wear American, I'll go grab something else. I thought y'all uh, called each other in the morning when I first saw y'all. Uh, played right. that out. Seventy eight hundred dollars. Good looking hat. You got a, yeah, a denim shirt on too, because Clay, you got a denim shirt on there but, too. Uh, that's a nice looking really shirt too. Up, I, think. I got one somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I got gave me one of them denim denim shirts. They're nice. I I like mine a lot. Got me. You know, yeah. I buy a lot. Of, I buy a lot of snap nice. shirts off of eBay. Uh, you can I get do a, too. You can get a, a Wrangler snap shirt for uh, twelve bucks. You know, including shipping a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. You get a. Uh, yeah, it's not bad. Same on the other aspect would be in Salt Lake. I have issues finding sizes, so I get all my stuff from eBay. So uh, saves me some money right. that way too. Okay. Hey, that works. Now them, them them shirts that you buy on eBay, they're twelve dollars. Uh, they're they're denim, right? I mean, uh, it's just all Wrangler. I I, I wear a lot of Wrangler um, snap shirts, so um, I just go on there and I search my size. Wrangler snap shirts yeah. and uh, whatever comes up, you know, uh, I'll grab. Yeah, if I got one of my favorite shirts. You know, looks okay. What do you got on? Yeah. What do you I wear? Got on it's a Wrangler. One of my favorite shirts is the cinch. Okay. Cinch I shirt. I haven't, I haven't tried yeah. any of the cinch. I um, I tried the Ariat. Um, what is it? The, the fishing style shirts. You know the vented. You know, kind of like uh, I wear a lot of LL Bean fishing shirts, and, and so I tried the Ariat ones. Man, they are not breathable at all. You know, the, the it's got a lot of venting, but but the actual material is just not. It's not. It's not breathable, and you kind of get hotter in that than I would in, you know, maybe a denim shirt. So I'm not a big fan of area. Yep. You know, nothing. Um, I've got I've got some area jeans, and and the rebar jeans are actually better than their, you know, fashion jeans. Um, they they look just as good. They're a little more stretchy. They, the, you know, the length is more true to size. They're not, you know. They're not as they're not as long. I don't know what it is about the the rebar. They're cheaper, you know. I just think I think the rebar jeans are a lot better. I'm 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 just not a, completely impressed with the uh, area so far. I don't know what it is, but you know. I think you know the, the owners started in California. Maybe they don't know what they're doing. You know, somehow they caught on and and everybody likes them, but they're just not really any good. Nothing they make is any good. What are you guys' opinion on that? How'd you been liking those boots? Oh, man. God, those, those boots are awful. They, um, you know, the, the only good thing about these, the only good thing about these boots is, um, and hang on a second. If anybody doesn't know. Positive times is a good touch. I mean, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, it um, sure is. You know, so right now I'm wearing Lucchese because, you know, that's just, that's what I'm comfortable in. Unless, unless I'm, you know, wearing them standing, walking, you know, 14,000 steps in four hours, Lucchese is a great boot. It's what I wear all the time. So I got these, um, Ariat Smooth Ostrich, and it's an all leather construction, um, upper. Uh, it's got the, you know, the, the junk, uh, rubber sole. Uh, it's basically a throwaway boot with, uh, you know, with some expensive 
um, leather uh, vamp and, and, and shaft. Well, these boots, they don't flex like a normal boot. The shaft is inflexible. I mean, if you look, I've worn these boots twice now, and there is no dimpling or creasing um, you know, in the shaft at all. I mean, how do you explain that? This boot is not wearing in. I've got probably 30,000 steps in this boot so far, and it's just not breaking in. <laughs> That's crazy. By the time I wear a pair two or three it, times, man, they're full of wear marks. Really? Yeah. You know. I, I, I'm a- it seems to be something with Ariats. They're just, uh, they're they're so tough and they, they just don't flex as good. I, I don't know what it is about the leather or the construction or like what you were mentioning to me the last time, you know, about the inner lining that they use on, on their boots. But even my full, uh, full quill ostrich uh, with the le- leather sole, they're just, uh, they're a little tougher than my other full quill ostrich from Ruho or any of my other ones. Yeah, I'm not going to dispute. Uh, they're probably a pretty tough boot. Um, they're going to last forever. And they, they're, they're comfortable, comfortable to stand in um, for a long period of time. As far as actually yep. being a boot and wearing like a boot, they're not. I mean, it's, it's not a boot to me. It's um I don't know how to explain it, but it doesn't even flex right. Uh, it's got a stiff shank in it. I, I don't know what they're using. It's something, for, you know, for that lightweight technology. This is that featherweight sole that they have. Yeah. You're probably I, using I a feather for a shank. <laughs> it's it's stiffer than that. It might be titanium. I don't know what it is because it's it's pretty stiff. Um, when I first put it on, it would not it would not flex. Um, you know, with your natural step, um, it would actually it would actually roll. When I would walk, you know, it would it would do this number instead of you know actually flexing like this. You know, it just kind of kind of rolled. It never it never did flex. And uh, you know, it seems to be well constructed for what it is. I mean, I paid dollars for this boot shipped. So. It was worth it. Yeah, that's a heck of a deal, though. Yeah, that's, that's I've, a pretty I've paid, good deal for a pair of boots. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've I've paid uh, I've paid that for a pair of Adidas that I you know ride mountain bikes in, so you know I mean, it's it's not it's not something crazy. It's not crazy money. I wouldn't spend two hundred fifty dollars on a pair of Ariats, though. They're just not worth it. I would definitely go the Anderson Bean, um, you know, the horsepower or you know. Or, there are many other boots in the $250 range that are 10, 10 times better boot. You know, I don't know how Ariat has marketed themselves the way they have, but they've done an amazing job of getting people to think that they're an amazing company. And everything I've seen, and I probably won't get any more deals from them by saying this, but it's, it's a bunch of junk. It's just absolute junk. They use a lot of social media. I think every t- almost every time I turn yeah. something on, something with area, it's on it. Yeah. It, uh, I think know, also it's due so to they, the they fact sponsor. that they were probably one of the f- yeah uh, big sponsors. You're right. And also it's, it's probably due to the fact that they were one of the first budget boot companies, you know, that were kind of trying to reinvent the boot. Uh, I've, I heard that, you know, one of their uh, um, first – uh, persons to actually uh, uh, work with them was uh, somebody that came from I think Adidas or Reebok and uh, they were trying to have Reebok start a boot line uh, cowboy boot line and they, they weren't for the idea and then I think th- uh, that that person went over to Ariat and uh, started putting in that technology into their into their cowboy boots so they, they've had that you know platform for so long so you know pe- people are like well that, that's a good deal right there you know and Tacovis, they also capitalized on that that marketing that 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 facebook marketing um uh, Tecovis, as a matter of fact yeah, Tecovis sitting right here because i'm still trying to do that video on this piece of junk um you know i don't know if i would buy Tacovis over 
the area or not. Um, maybe just because of uh, manufactured in Mexico and um, you know, better materials. But it's it's also another boot where I think if you're going to spend two hundred and fifty dollars, there's there's ten other brands out there that you should be looking at before either one of these. Yeah, there's not definitely a lot better the, options. Um, yeah, and well, not to mention that uh, I've got I got two pair of Tacovas sitting here. Uh, one's a size ten, <laughs> one's uh, an eight and a half double E. The the size ten is tighter than the the double E eight and a half. I mean. You know, explain that to me. How did they? I don't know who they've got. You know, figuring out what last they should be using, but that guy is blind. Hey, uh, <laughs> Ariot has that same issue. We went to uh, the local cabiners. My girlfriend wanted a new pair of boots, and she wanted to go try some on. And uh, she was looking at some eights and some tens and Ariots and the women's sizing, and some were tighter and some were looser than the others. I mean, there was you. You could look at the same pair of boots and. A 10 would be tight and an 8 would fit. Uh, well, you know, I mean, and that, that goes for everything. Um, Lucchese's the same way. I wear uh, size 9 Lucchese uh, Originals. I can go to Cavenders and I can grab an off-the-shelf area, or I'm not, not area, Lucchese, um, you know, pair of you know, like, what, 2000s or whatever, you know, man. What they call it, boot makers now. They've they've kind of done away with their branding, but um, you know, they're cheaper boots, the four hundred, six hundred dollar boots. And I've I've got pictures of a pair of Devons next to a pair of off the shelf Cavenders, you know, stocking boot um, with the same toe shape, you know, same everything. And I can hold two nines together. I can't get my foot in the you know off the shelf, off the rack boot, you know. It's just too small. It looks like a toy compared to, um, you know, their their originals. I, I don't know. I've even asked them, you know, what's the deal here? They they say it's the last. And and we're talking about two American-made boots, not uh, a Mexican boot and, a, and an American boot. And I see uh, I got some sunlight coming in behind me here. I'm going to have to jump back here and shut those blinds or something real quick. Yeah, same here. Yeah, it's going to be the same man, thing. we just send y'all some of y'all's heat back. <laughs> it was cool when I left and came down there, man. It was hot, and I came back up, and it was hotter here than it was down there. <laughs> yeah, you see Where's how that, that works on you? The heat's following you, man. Oh, yeah, you were down in, yeah, well, down I, in Miami uh, area. Yeah, went down to Florida a couple weeks ago, and it was, man, it was humid. It was hot, you know, high, high 90s. It was pretty, pretty warm for this area, and, uh, it was in the 70s here. Thanks for when, taking the heat back to Georgia. Yeah, I was in the 70s here when I left. I got back in Georgia. Felt good that Sunday, man. Monday hit, and it was 98 degrees. Felt like 110, 115. Yeah, I, yep. text line, I was like, dude, I think it, your heat followed you me. Know, it's, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm it, telling you. It's, it's funny. I was in I was in Mexico a week before last, and um, I got home last Monday uh, about midnight. I get off the airplane. It's a little warm, you know, but I go outside to catch an Uber, and I, it's like I'm breathing underwater. It's I don't know. It was like 70% humidity, but I'd been in 12% humidity for a week, so I was I was dying. Yeah, it was uh, it was 45% humidity here when I left that Monday. When we got back, it was 92%. Humidity. It was ridiculous. That's Florida for you. Y'all can keep that. I, was, I, I, I like my, I like my mountain times. weather up here. <laughs> I'm telling you, you guys got the best of everything, don't yeah, you? Yeah, man. You, Are you, you in the mountains? You go south there? and you got your Florida weather. You can go across the coastal towards the Savannah area, and it's a little cooler at the water than it is in Florida. You can go up you get the North Georgia mountains up into the Blue Ridge, LJ area, man. You can get cool, see your snow. You, uh, you got about everything. I, I think that, you know, like, North. North Carolina's got the perfect medium of everything. Yeah, I would say that 100, 110%. Yeah. You know, they got they got perfect winters, perfect summers. I don't know. I got stuck yeah, I got in, a... in North Carolina mountains one winter. <laughs> it can it can get rough if you get up in the in the top part of the mountains over there. 
Oh yeah, yeah. that altitude ain't gonna be your friend no, for long. Uh, we uh, yeah. we always always go up towards uh, towards Blairsville, Georgia. It's right there at the uh, the Blairsville and Hayesville, North Carolina line for, during the winter. We got family there, and we'll stay a week week or two right around Christmas, man. And it starts to snow, and if you ain't careful, you can get trapped in real quick. You can get a lot oh, more yeah. snow, man. I'm right I'm right at the bottom of the mountains, and we we hardly ever see a thing. I think we got maybe an inch and a half last year if we were lucky. Especially if you don't so come prepared with them to, with the right tires. <laughs> That's true. I, um, I was, where was it? I, um, I was going from Florida. I was moving to uh, Oregon, and I drove from Florida through Texas into California, and then up California into Oregon. And this was probably November December time frame. And I hit those mountains in uh, Southern Oregon northern california and it started snowing and they said you can't pass through the mountains unless you have chains and i'm like i don't have chains i've never even seen chains and so i had to stop and buy i had to buy a set of chains just to finish going through the mountains you know what of all the years i've been up in the mountains with snow in this area i've never seen a set of chains that must be you know i've always heard of the chains up towards northern more that just must not be a southern thing at all no. Yeah. I mean, I, I must just drop it four eleven and go yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, yeah, man. Just right. send it. I don't know. Chains are chains are nice. I mean, they they definitely work. I've I've driven in some some nasty snow, and I've got I've got four wheel drive. Uh, I mean, not here. I don't need a four wheel drive here. I've got a I've got a four wheel drive in Kentucky. And um, hell, I haven't even driven that car probably. In a year. <laughs> All right, so uh, we talked hats. I think, did I mention I'm wearing an American hat? I think everybody can tell it's uh, American 7800. Um, yeah. We talked about shirts. We uh, talked chains. We talked chains. We talked everything, you know. Uh, how about boots? Are you guys wearing boots or are you getting sock feet since you're in your house? I just. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You got boots on? What are you wearing? What are you wearing? I got a pair of Dan Post Winslows on. Lionel, what you got? Um, I got on uh, my my Romans. Okay. The the hand tooled ones. Ah, those nice. are nice. I like right. those a lot. Fancy hat, fancy boots. Oh man, those those are sweet. Yeah, you know, I I, I was supposed to wear them yesterday to go to work, but since I got sick, some fierce. I decided I was just going to wear them today. There you go. And I messaged him about making me a pair, and he ain't got a big enough last. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What do you wait? Well, uh, yeah, at that point, he has to make a custom last. What are you, 18 double E, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm uh, uh, either a seven, 17 double E or an 18. I can fit in a, in a, in a damn post okay. 17 double E. That's about the only company that makes anything now. I know Cavenders. That um, area makes a work boot, so I got great choices. Do they? I know Cavenders. Um, I thought Luke Casey made one. Luke Casey doesn't have a big Luke enough Casey last. Luke Casey will make you one. Don't they? They'll make really? me Did one, but it won't be cheap. Really? Yeah, that's two grand for a last. Yeah. He, uh, Plus, yeah, Joe uh, put me in with a good contact. I think you got to pay through Luke Casey. Yeah. Well, that's that sucks. Um, I, you know, I know. It's like two grand to have it last made, but then they have to fly somebody out to you. So I don't know if you have to pay for that. I'm, I'm sure you probably got to pay for it. Uh, to be honest, there. we didn't even get that far into the talks. <laughs> we, uh, she talked about, you know, <laughs> she said two thousand dollars, and you were like, "I'm done." It was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna spend that much on a pair of boots right now." <laughs> Did I tell you that he only flies first class? <laughs> yeah, yeah, they gotta fly him out right. <laughs> I mean, it was better I could fly, I could fly to Austin. Uh, El Paso. I'll man, I'll stay away from planes. I'd, I'd rather drive. <laughs> I fly a lot. Um, I fly a whole lot. Um, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, whiskey helps. <laughs> but um, <laughs> six foot ten don't mix too well with planes. Um, oh well, man, you gotta fly first class. I I can't even sit in the back of the bus anymore. It's it's such a 
it's such a different experience. You get the front row, you get all the leg room in the world. There you go. Search the deals out. But um, so so Dan Post, uh, I know Cavenders. You know, I think the largest they stock on the shelf is like a 13, and there's not too many of those. Once you get to, you know, uh, 11 and a half to 12 takes up an entire wall. I mean, they, they got a lot of 11 and a half and 12s. So but uh, anything after 12, good luck. You just can't get anything. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a boot in the store to fit me. I mean, it's got to be at least before COVID. I, uh, I've seen a couple 17s and 18s, but it's been a very long time. COVID, COVID pretty much killed the production on that. Speaking of which, you know, um, so do you have a Cavenders where you're at? Do you have a – what kind of – how many Western stores you got there in southern Georgia? I, you're in southern Georgia, right? No, I'm in uh, – I guess you call Central. it north, northwest Georgia. I'm, uh, okay. I'm about 45 minutes north of Atlanta to the, to the west side. Okay. So I'm right at the bottom of the so, North Georgia I mean, mountains. I, w- I would assume. I, I would okay. assume you've got – You've got at least some options for uh, Western wear, and, you know. Uh, uh, there was there's the Cavenders that used to be a horse town. Cavenders came in and bought out our local little Western store. Um, there's a Take the Reins Western store north of me. That's my that's my Rodeo King guy. Tex is a great guy. Yeah, uh, does very good with Rodeo Kings. Um, I posted your the, I posted your picture on, on the Instagram, and I you I tagged did I saw that just to, yeah that was awesome to to hook them up yeah. Yeah, he's uh, he did great with that head. He's a great guy. Uh, I'm a I'm a big American guy, but it was hard not to try to go get something from him to uh, help a buddy out. But uh, to the south of us, yeah. there's another uh, below Atlanta. There was another horse town that Cavenders bought out, and then uh, to the east of us, there's another. So now we have Cavenders, Horse Town, West, East, and South. Um, there's a uh, Lane Creek to the north of me. He, all he does is just custom hats. He doesn't mess with anything else, and. Um, that, to be honest, that's really about it in the area. Uh, most of what used to be is now all cabiners. We've got your local yeah. Hispanic Western stores here and there, but there's not many of them. Maybe one or two. Okay, and we got a lot of those here. I mean, we got a lot of we got a lot of options in Texas. But, um, I mean, you know, but even um, even the online market's pretty good right now. You know, uh, cabiners got great online presence. Um, Shepler's and Boot Barn, same thing now. So, um, Shepler's has, I, I think, you know, I just, I'm not a big fan of Boot Barn. Uh, I don't think they have, I don't think they're hiring, they hire people with knowledge. Um, in my experience, you know, you go into a Boot Barn and. See, un- unfortunately, I, I say the same get. thing They've about Cavenders because it seems like everybody at the Cavenders around really? us are idiots. They don't know what they're talking about, they okay. don't know anything. It's, uh, but the boot barn isn't much better either. <laughs> right. So, well, you know, and got, my problem with the boot barn th- is, my problem with the boot barn is they, they push a lot of their own products. You know, they, they sell uh, not, not Cody Johnson. Who, who is it they sell? They, yeah, the Cody yeah. Johnson stuff. They put through hard. Yeah, Cody James. Cody James. Yeah, that's what it is. Cody James. Yeah, yeah that's Cody what they James. call they it. Little, you know, and, and I think that's, that's really a licensed product. They license the name, and that's I think that's that's just a strictly a, a boot barn thing. So, boot barn is kind of like the area of the Western world. <laughs> you know, they're just out there pushing whatever they can whatever they can sell. Well, you know, they bought they bought Shepler's. Shepler's is you know yeah just a tradition. You know, a, a great store, um, and I, and I hope that. It doesn't fall into just being another boot barn. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what. I know you can order. I know you can order from Shepler's and, and pick it up at, at a boot barn, uh, and they still have a lot of great products. Where boot barn is, you know, still selling all that, you know, basically junk. But they, I mean, they do carry some good yeah, stuff. It's the exact products. same thing. You know, boot barn though. Mm-hmm. They carry they carry Carhartt. They carry you know uh, Levi's, Wrangler. 
So, I mean, you can get some good stuff there. It's, it's their boots and their hats is, is the problem I have. You know, they got a lot of resist all um, cheap um, straw. Yeah. And then they've got a I lot was, of uh, I was surprised how yeah. good the, the hat room looked. And all, uh, the, uh, I know you called it on it, Joe, the, uh, the fellow that had bought that Rodeo King Grizzly. And he posted those pictures of it on the Rodeo King page. I was surprised how, how many hats that boot barn had. And actually, they really almost had a true hat room. Because usually it's just some yeah. hats on a wall and a little little small desk or something for shaping. Yeah, and um, even yeah, the Austin the location, the South Austin Grizzlies are rare hats. You know, um, really the the uh, boot barn. We've here got one kind of in joke. South Georgia and Valdosta, and uh, it's just it's just some hats hanging on a wall. <laughs> now I'm surprised every time you almost every time you go in there they do have American, but it's uh, it's all kind of random sizing and random style really? hats. At Boot Barn? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah wow. the Boot That's Barn about Austin actually had some yeah, 6800s when I went in there. I went to the Boot Barn in Ocala. They didn't. They hardly had any American. The Boot Barn in Jacksonville had American. I went to that one when I was down there. Oh, is that yeah, a fact? The, uh, on the uh, west side of Jacksonville there, kind of below Highway 10. Yeah, oh, okay. They, uh, they had some American. Well, and, you know, uh, well, where's it? Uh, Jacksonville, Crown, Jack, you know Jacksonville isn't really um, Florida. That's that's Southern Georgia. <laughs> that's uh, South Georgia. South Georgia. <laughs> that's that's a big joke down there. Um, you know. Uh, it is. <laughs> Tell you what, though, I like Jacksonville. Over by us. I like Atlanta. Oh, I don't like Atlanta. Yeah. I, oh, definitely. I, a company I used I to work I work in Atlanta had, a lot, uh, man. I do not like Atlanta. No. Uh, it's like saying Miami down yeah. here. Yeah. Same crap. I, I hate going there. That's why we, we, we actually got, funny enough, we got some uh, Western stores down in South Miami, like in the extreme really? south, because – that's when, yeah, because that's when you start getting towards uh, what's that place called? It's it's uh, it's right before you get to the Keys, uh -huh. and there's a bunch of ranches and everything, but everybody speaks Spanish, and um, it's it's yeah. like a little bit of country, and you know before you get to the ah. Keys, huh? Yeah, and uh, so there's a few of them over there, but really they're you know. I never go there because I have to go through Miami, and well, that just yeah, sucks. Yeah, ain't worth it. Have you been to the uh, the cabiners nope. at the uh, open or in our uh, in Orlando? No, I haven't been there. Yeah, the uh, I haven't had a one chance. of the ladies that was an assistant general manager at our at our the fly their flagship horse town up here, and she's running it. She went down there to help them run it. So I've heard they have a lot better selection as of you know a true hat room and actual hats. The, uh, the biggest issue I have with our cabiners here is that they, they treat a hat as an accessory versus a piece of clothing. Right. It's uh, you know, they just they throw right. it to the side and they uh, they want they give her they give their hat shapers like a twenty minute minimum maximum. They, you know they want somebody in and out within twenty minutes on shaping a hat and you know wow. I don't think I've ever had a hat shaped in less than an hour, especially a film. Because I mean yeah, you, should, you know you know it's an experience. Sit that, there and talk to the person. I think that the, of course. Exactly, you know, and and uh, the Cavenders South Austin, you know, it's it has a um, it has a pretty good hat bar, but you know, there's no seating. I think there should be seating for the customers. You know, that that is an experience when you go go in That's there. That's how and shape hat, is as well. Sit down. You should sit down. The customer should sit down yep. and and you know, talk about the hat, and, and it is a personal experience. And oh. you know, when I was, they, I don't, they wouldn't want that because. Dude, cust customer could walk around the store and shop some more, you know. While you're shaping their hat. Yeah, it's like, hey, go on, take a walk, and uh, see what else you want to yeah. buy. That's why I like going to uh, Lane Creek or, or my buddy up in Chatsworth to take the reins, man. We went up there, and he, uh, he shaped that radio king for me. I mean, he knocked it out. I mean, he knocked that straw out in 15 minutes, but then we sat there and talked for an extra 45 minutes. About, you know, we got yeah. a big rodeo scene up in that area. We got a big rodeo coming up next weekend, a championship rodeo. It's my uh, 43rd annual. It's our oldest rodeo. And it uh, won 
won the nice. uh, won the rodeo of the year last year. So he's getting set up and getting ready to that, and he's going to go out there and sell some hats and stuff. So beautiful. Um, How about uh, you, Lionel? Actually, uh, next week is a rodeo that I'm huh. Go ahead. I was gonna. Oh, I was gonna ask you next about week your, is a rodeo. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, next week is uh, the rodeo, and now the only actual real uh, Western store we have down here is uh, Griff's Western. It's out in Davie, and uh, they always uh, sponsor the Weekly Brothers Rodeo down here. And actually, we got the rodeo coming up on Saturday night at 7:30, so I'm going to be out there working that one too. Um, you know, moving the bulls from the from the stalls to the to the buck and shoots and all that. So. Um, but um, yeah, that, you know that's basically the the, the only and the best uh, Western store we got. I mean, they sell everything. Uh, uh, I mean, they got a huge boot department. They got uh, everything for uh, equine and uh, saddles. You name it. Um, they also have a feed store side of it. So it's it's real good. You know, and it's it's right there. There's it's it's funny enough. It's right here, right there in the uh, Fort Lauderdale, Hollywood area. It's a small town called mm -hmm. Davie, and um, that's basically a you know cowboy town. So, you're a big fan of. Awesome. Um, are you just a fan of the uh, the bull riding, or are you a fan of uh, you know all the rough stock? Oh, we lost Clay there for a second, I think. Uh, I'm a fan of all the rough stock. Uh, I like. Um, I like the team roping. I like the uh, bareback riding. Uh, you know, tie down roping. That's actually one of my favorite. Even though I mostly work, you know, with the, you know, just you know, strapping up the the Bronx and the uh, and the bulls. I uh, I mostly, you know, uh, I, I actually do enjoy watching the tie down roping the most, and also the barrel racing. Yeah, I mean barrel racing. But it's all fun to me. Fun to I love it. Yeah, barrel barrel racing is pretty fun to watch. Um, yep. Uh, I, I like um, breakaway roping is pretty cool too. I mean, it's fast. Um, I, I like that, and I think my favorite's um, you know cutting and um, and raining. I really like watching what they can do in raining, and that's oh, that's awesome. Yeah, it is. That's a whole different class right there. Okay, I always wanted that's to do that. You know? I thought you know, what's that? You. Yeah, that's something I've never been able to see in person. That's something we should, they just don't have around here. But it's uh, I love to watch it. You know. Oh, cutting. Or yeah. raining. Yeah. Raining. That, yeah. That, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that that's 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 a lot of fun. I I, I think also another sport that takes a lot of uh, you know like a tie down roping takes a lot of skills. You know, you got to do so much in such little time. It, it's not even funny. You know, you got to literally go at it. Uh, you know, uh, you got to rope that, 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 that steer and and uh, basically get off your horse, tie it down to your horn, and and uh, go at it and flip it and tie it down on its three three hoofs. So that's yeah. that, that takes some good amount of skills right there to do it in such a quick time. Yeah, is it uh, Trevor Brazil? You know, wasn't he like twenty-two time world champion? Hang on a second, I got Clay here. Yeah, he's um, might have to jump out and have him jump back in. Let's see here real quick, because uh, I can't see his video. Can you see his video? I can see it now. You're you're frozen for me, Joe. Lionel, is my video good for you? Yeah, I can see you. Yeah, so what I've got, what it's showing for me, Clay, it says um, still recording video at high quality. Clay Evans' internet is weak. Don't worry, they. Really. You're still recording. It says, yeah. So it's telling me that your videos or your um, your internet's weak. Have pretty good internet. It might be the connection through this studio. Do you want me to hop uh, out and try to yeah. hop back in? Uh, it, yeah, I want you to do that real quick. See what happens. Maybe that'll 
Maybe I'll fix it. Okay. Uh, we're talking about some. <coughs> hopefully this. Hopefully this turns out pretty good because um, pretty cool stuff here. Yeah, definitely. This is this is working out. Did that help good. any? I see him. He's, oh, there he is. Yep, looking good there, Clay. Got you back. Sweet. So, so Lionel, I was going to tell you um, when I was in when I was in DFW for uh, the best hat store interview. Uh, there's a Cavenders between the hotel and uh, best hat store. It's Cavenders Stockyard. It, it's a it's a really neat looking building too, and I didn't have a chance to go in there because, you know, I was only there a very short amount of time, and uh, I had a lot of stuff to do. I, my my schedule was really full, so we're gonna have to hit that up. Uh, Lionel and I are going to um, we're going to Bowie in the first couple weeks of July, and uh, we're gonna. We're gonna stay oh, at the awesome. stockyard. We're gonna stay at the stockyard yeah. for a day after he gets there, and we're gonna hit the, we're gonna hit up Joby's Hat Store. We're gonna hit up Best Hat Store. Uh, what, are, what are we doing? The um, Cowboy Hall of Fame and a couple other things. Yeah, Cowboy we, Hall of Fame. Whatever, whatever we can get accomplished, you know, in in DFW for that you know, one or day and a half you know, period we're there, and then we're gonna head up to Bowie. And, yeah. Uh, we might drop in on some some other people while we're there. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll we'll see how how, how uh, lucky we could get with you know finding somebody <laughs> or people that we want to meet. You know, yeah, yeah. So it'll be it'll that be interesting. Like and, uh, My, I, I gotta get down there, man. Yeah, well, yeah. When you coming, man? You come and hold the camera for us. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Put me to work. <laughs> Do what? Yeah. No. Um, yeah. You know, it's it's really hard. Uh, Lionel Lionel knows. It's really hard to do these. You know, one man band type things. So hopefully, um, you know, I'll be able to hold the camera for Lionel, and and vice versa. He'll be able to hold it for me while we're down yep. there. We can we kind of knock out both of those at the at the same time and have a little bit extra help. And and I got some new uh, I got some new audio gear that'll. You know, fix the issues I had when I was at Best Hat Store. That audio was horrible in that first 15 minutes of that that video. It was such a great video to to have such. Oh, it was amazing! Yeah, I audio. enjoyed that. I, I I I liked it. I enjoyed making it, and I enjoyed um, you know all the information that Ryan gave. It was such such good information, and you know, the only bad thing is that first 10 or 15 minutes of the video with the horrible audio. I'm, I just, I hope that it doesn't turn people off and say, I'm not watching this, you know. So, you know, if you, if you haven't seen that video, just know, um, after that first 15 minutes, the audio does get better. Um, and our next videos are going to be even better because I've got, I got some, some killer audio, uh, you know, uh, wearable mics that are going to alleviate that. So it, it's just going to get better from here. Awesome. I honestly didn't didn't uh, find the audio to be so bad. I mean, I I had to turn up the volume a little bit, and that's all it was. And then turn it back down when you came back, you know, to the to the better done video with the audio, and it was fine. That's exactly how I found it. Okay. Well, I mean, turned that's the that's up yeah. a little bit, and I, I kept watching. That's it. Well, that's good to know because um, you know, in editing, I watched that. Uh, all 45 minutes of that video probably 50 times you know editing it because there was a lot of video and so you watch that thing 50 times and you know every single mistake and you you're super critical of every everything that you did in that so so I, I'm probably my worst my own worst critic but there it is yeah we all are <laughs> right yeah yeah, I'm about to get. You know, I mean, yeah. everybody, people, you know, folks can look at my video and say, 
man, you did great. And I'm like, man, I look like the biggest dumbass right here and here and there. You know what I mean? But realistically, it's because we're our worst critics. And, you know, folks watching the video are like, well, hey, that looks pretty damn good to me. That's a good bit of information. And you're over here sound, thinking you sound like the biggest dumbass when in reality you sound normal and they just really want to get you, the information out of you. Hey, at I least think Chuck that's got the gumption to do it, man. I'm the one sitting behind the computer screen on Facebook comment. Uh, you know, yeah. you know, I think um, I, that was my biggest hurdle because I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not the guy who goes out there and wants to make the video. I want to put the information out there, but I'm, I'm not. I don't want to be behind the camera. I want the information out there, and I want it out there, you know, in a specific manner. And I do a lot of research. And I think that's just my background. So I think I've got all of this information and it took me all the, this time to get it. There's a lot of people who aren't gonna go to that, go to those links or they don't have any idea how to get the information. So I just wanna get the information out there and this is the only way I can do it. So I've just gotta get more comfortable, you know, being in front of the camera. And I, you know, that's, that's obvious from the videos I produce there they're really technical because my background is technical and they're they're kind of monotone so i've got to i got to pump up the you know the the creative creativity and the and the and the um, enthusiasm i guess just when i'm when i'm doing these things so i got a, i got a pretty good um, interview coming up uh, before we go to um, before we go to Bowie, i've got a interview coming up and i'll have confirmation on that tomorrow, so I'll probably be announcing it this week. But it, it should be it should be much better, and it'll give us a, a little bit of um, experience before we go to Bowie, and, and hopefully the Bowie interviews and uh, and all of the audio and video there will be even better because of it. So fingers crossed. Yep. And you know, doing stuff like this, it helps. And uh, also, we're going. Yep, definitely does. You know, it's uh, it's it's a bit more natural to uh, talk on a, you know, talk with other folks than, you know, talk on a camera. You know, when you're talking on the camera, like, man, wait, I gotta redo this. I messed up on this. But when you're talking to somebody else, you know, you're not. You're, it, it's almost not scripted. So, you know, you're just kind of having a conversation instead of, kind of going based on exactly what you want to talk about and it's kind of scripted you know it makes it a lot easier having a conversation absolutely and and that's yes, why i does. like that's why i like doing the interviews better than i like doing the reviews uh, when i do an interview i don't have any problems i don't script it i i know what i want to ask for the most part i let the questions lead into more questions or the answers lead into to different questions so I, I, I really like doing the interviews a lot more, and, and that's something I'd like to schedule more of, and I'd like to do more of these style videos, because it's just, it's easier, and I feel more comfortable, and it's, it's less, um, less intimidating, I think. So. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Definitely. So quick question guys what are your most comfortable boots that you've worn or like maybe a specific brand or just in general your your favorite most comfortable boot man it, it's got to be um blue casey devon for me in in the brown right now i'm wearing um today i'm wearing the black devons because for some reason and i've mentioned this many times the the brown devons they're they're both of them they, they make them in three colors. They make them in a brown, burnished. They make them in um, a chocolate. They make them in a black. And they're they're all uh, ranch hand calf. And it is some of the softest leather. I've sent you um, video, Lionel. It, I mean, it's like butter. But uh, the black is yeah, definitely. The black is, is stiffer. And I think it's because of the dye. We've th I've talked to Lucchese about this. And I think it's the dye they've used that made it stiffer. So I'm, I've been wearing these black. Devon's just trying to get them softer and softer and it's working um, you know I can look at the soles on my brown pair and you know 
they, they've got some wear on them. And the black one is still, you know, even though I feel like I'm wearing them a lot, they're not, they're not wearing in, so they're not, they're not broken in yet. But the brown Devons and that ranch hand calf is absolutely the softest, most comfortable pair of boots I've ever owned. Now you're saying the brown ones are the softer ones, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I don't yeah. know what that. It's I don't know funny why. you should say that because I have. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, well, it's funny you should say that because I got a pair of Nakonas, uh, not the ones that I just reviewed uh, on Wednesday, but uh, another pair. They're um, um, they're calfskin too, and those are custom Nakonas. They're uh, um, they're actually a little bit on the higher price for. Um, for the you know Nakunas, uh, but uh, they're they're made in their you know kind of specialty factory or whatever, and um, those are stiff as, as all get out, and and they're um, those boots are are calfskin, but they're black, you know they're very basic looking boots. I mean they're they're actually the perfect dress wedding, you know like going to a wedding or going to a very formal event. You know, you could almost pass them off as dress shoes, but uh, they're they're stiff, and maybe maybe it's because of the black dye that makes them stiffer too. That's it's funny. You know, I I, I know calfskin's supposed to be soft as butter. I I know it's funny because I keep pulling boots uh, out from right next to me like I'm like I've got the entire thing here, but it but I've got a pile here because all of these are in upcoming videos that I, I'm trying to do. But if, if we're talking about brown versus black, these are the brown um, elephant, and they are super stiff compared to the black. Now, these black... Those are awesome looking. Man, those look great. They are, they're so much softer. And now, let's be honest, I've, I've worn these. You know, these have been worn. And and the brown have not <laughs> so yeah. so you know that could be it could be oh that's that makes a difference right, right there it could be and i want i want these um i love the brown ones i think they're beautiful and i want them to be as soft as the the black ones and it be as comfortable but i got to get the video finished before i can even wear them So, so Clay, what, what what is your most comfortable pair of uh, of boots that you got in your collection? Probably those these Danpost ones, those to be honest. They've got a really good true leather sole on them. They're comfortable, man. I just I, I beat the crap out of them. They wear good. They uh, they clean up nice. I mean, it's a, it's a pair of boots I wear a lot. Throw some bick on them, clean them up, and we'll go out to go eat somewhere, and they look like a good pair of boots. Yeah, that, that, that's all you could ask from a pair of cowboy boots, you know. Exactly. You could work in them and clean them up and go out of town on it. It'll work yep. just fine. Unfortunately, I just don't I don't have a big collection because there just isn't anything there. <laughs> I've uh, I've got about four or five pairs of damn posts and a pair of Ariat work boots, and uh, <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> the Ariats look better than the damn posts. But you probably own every single pair of cowboy boots they make in your size. <laughs> that's probably about all they do make. Uh, I, might, I think they make one pair of uh, of a real like snip, real tight toe, and uh, I just couldn't get my foot in them. They're right, they just weren't <laughs> wide enough, so I left them. I'll tell you what, when we, um, you know, That's when we go viral and we start uh, we start getting a lot of contacts here, we're gonna have to say, all right, if you want to work with us, you got to make our buddy Clay a pair of boots. <laughs> So what I'm trying to find, man. I've been look. I've even been looking for somebody to make some custom pairs, and I've talked to a few people, but but everybody I talk to just something doesn't seem right every time, and I'm not just going to send somebody money. You know, yeah. and that's that's the thing. Um, Lionel and I have talked about this before. Um, because Lucchese has such, I mean, everything. You know, you go out and you buy. Like we talked about this earlier eight and a half double e size nine size 10 you know you can wear all of those at some you know with some manufacturer or another so i think for me the next thing is going to be true custom last and um texas traditions is is who i'm looking at you know if you're if you're thinking about a pair of custom boots 
I think that's probably your best bet is to go with something like that and go in and have them make a last and you know even if it's three thousand dollars it's better than giving Luke Casey you know two grand for a last and another two grand to make a pair of boots I don't know yeah, I don't know what yeah. his pricing is that's but, uh, I would agree with that When I, when I do get to get that way, that's something I'm going to have to research and figure out who I want to go with. Because I'm definitely going to have something made while I'm there and get the foot sizing done. And then, you know, when I fly mm-hmm. back, I just have something shipped to me. There you go. Or actually, I, I, have I, you I seen, think I'm going to drive. But. Clay, have you seen that, uh, that video Kirby Allison did with uh, Texas Traditions? I have not. Yeah. you got to check it out. He's right here in Austin. I have. It's it's amazing. I mean, there's several several videos on it, and I mean, it's it's a couple hours worth of the entire process from him measuring his foot and making the last. It's, it's a great video. I you know I'm not a huge fan of Kirby Allison awesome. because he's a little foo foo for me, but um, you know he did a great job on that video. And I mean, you know, it is what it is. You know, he he's got his own audience, and and that's fine. You know, if that that's that's what works for him. Clearly, he's making a shit ton of money. And um, he's got a great business going, and I, you know, I applaud him for that. But he's just, uh, he's, he's a little different. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I like both of the videos I watched from him: the hat one and the boots one. <laughs> I haven't seen his hat one. That's all I saw. He did a he did a hat <laughs> one too. <laughs> yeah, he did. He went to a custom hat maker and uh, got himself a cowboy hat made. All I have right, seen man. that one. Okay. <laughs> that one I've seen. I haven't seen the boot one. I'm about to look at the boot one. Yeah. Yeah, the other yeah, stuff he's... is uh like Joe said, a little bit too foo foo for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kirby. We love you, buddy. Yeah, I have definitely got some stuff to do when I when I get out that way, though. I gotta get some stuff scheduled. I gotta get I'm gonna get with uh Best Hat next week and see what kind of process I've gotta get on to get my five hundred X rolling. Yeah, there you go. You gonna do a custom? Yep. Uh, yeah, that's the plane. I think if the, if they're taking orders, I'm not sure how the order process is going right now. Yeah, I don't know. Last I heard, this was a couple months ago that they're not taking any orders uh, this year. I mean, you know, that could things could change. Yeah. But uh, I know they're doing straws. But I don't okay. know about felts. So, because I talked to. Because uh, you're gonna get a, a custom built from American, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you got to go in there. Uh, yeah, Mitch said he's looking forward to seeing your hat. Yeah, yeah, I saw where yeah. you. Know, I talked to him actually, talked to him about that. So. Yeah, man, he's like, man, you fixing to get hitched? When is We're the date? There. Oh, you don't have a date get, yet. No date right. yet. I gotta get all my ducks in a row. Okay. No, 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 no date. So yeah, but I gotta get all my ducks in a row and everything. So. To do a cust- to do a custom hat with uh, American, you're gonna have to go down there to. To um, best hat, and they're gonna have to put that you know thing on your head and measure your measure your skull, right? Usually yes, but I actually I'm that's something I'll talk to them. You know, I've got I I had I was conformatory by Greeley, and I have that. Okay, all right. So I don't know if that's something that they can use, and I can send to them versus me having all the way down there or not. But that's a the Greeley was a whole different process, man. That uh that was very interesting. So you've been to Greeley? That's that's something I, 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 I no I so Gre- Trent Johnson who is their custom hatter their, you know their main hatter right. he does his truck shows around around the country and he did one in Pigeon Forge Tennessee at Stages West and I went up there and we did the the conformator all that process and had a custom made and I did uh, what is like their fifty percent beaver hat and um, took them about seven months to get it. Uh, I went at the beginning of July, and I got it in December. And uh, it was interesting when I got it, not to say the least. It uh, it was built about an inch and a quarter off, back center, crooked, and it was about an inch and a quarter off my actual head size. Wow! When it came in, I've heard a lot of bad so I had to things go back about up, really. Get, had to go back up, get remeasured. It got sent out. They told me two weeks to rebuild. Three weeks, I didn't hear anything. I called. Gave me an excuse. Called again. A week later, gave me an excuse. 
But then they kind of got, you know, they cocked an attitude with me, and I was like, yeah, I'm done. And I called Stages, and Stages sent me, you know, that's that was almost a thousand dollar hat, and they sent me my money back for it. And I went and had Lane Creek make me this 50x, and I had Lane Creek make me this 50x, and I put money in my pocket. <laughs> Here you go. So it's crazy when you bought such an expensive hat, and you know, people have the audacity to catch an attitude with you. Yeah, and that was uh, supposed you know, to be, you know, something of their customer service, and I was supposed to be dealing with the main guy. And just wasn't a good experience. I might be the only person yeah. that's had that. I don't know, but uh, my my head measures at twenty four and a half inches, which is between a seven and five eighths and a seven and three quarters. And when we got it back, it measured under a seven and a half. Yes, I just thought it was you know tight. You know new so new hats can be tight, but I was like yeah it's tight. Maybe I'll wear it in, and uh, I wore it for about a month, man. And it just every time I wore it, it hurt my head. It didn't sit right on my head. I like my you know I like my hats to sit low, as this one's on my ears. I took them thing down low, and that hat was sitting like here. Yeah, you know I've got um, I've got some cattlemen that I, that's that's what I wear. It's my it's my things. Things with cattlemen, and I've got some that are that are deeper than other others. This one, um, you know, isn't particularly deep, and I can I can push it down pretty good. You know, it it definitely will uh, bend my ears down if I put it down all the way. Uh, I got one that you know this guy he, when he shaped it, it is really deep, and it it definitely sits up you know higher like this. So it's it's all about you know the guy shaping yeah, it a yeah. lot of times. Yeah, exactly. I like I like my my tall crowns. So this, you know, this one here's a brick. This my, my other 50x is a brick. That 7800 is a brick. My 845 is a brick. <laughs> but uh, how how tall is that crown? Uh, this, it's a six inch crown, open. So I think it was a uh, five six and crown. maybe five and three quarter shaped. I mean, it's not that deep of a cat. It's really not that deep of a brick, but it's a very defined brick. It is nice. Like your Kojo it's, style. Yeah. It's very, it's very defined for sure. Yeah, he can. It might, he can shape. He uh, he shaped the brick and did the did the crown on it very well. And uh, he's old school. He, he he does the old school brims real well. The old school crowns real well. He uh, we tried on this this granite head. He did do a rodeo type, you know, real wide, relaxed taco type, and just he got it decent, but it wasn't where I wanted it at. And, so I brought it back and got it back right where I wanted it. But he's a uh, he can make a hat. He, uh, it's an experience, man. You go over there and he he does everything while you're there. If he has the body, with well, it, he, he knocks a hat out in about three and a half hours by himself. Huh. From you know from from start of body to blocking it and sanding it and uh, uh, pressing the brim and everything. So it's definitely something cool to see. Where? Yeah, he's fast. Where's that at? For sure. That's in uh, Daresville, Georgia. So uh, Lane Creek Custom Hatters. Okay. He uh, he was taught by Buckaroo Custom Hatters out of Tennessee. There's there's a lot I have, more. Uh, I've noticed a lot recently. There's a lot more custom hatters popping up. I don't know if it's just because they're just now starting to get on the social media side of things. A lot of them you look at have yep. been there for a long time, but they're just now starting to push themselves out there, and it's uh, yep. it's cool to see the custom hatter guys coming around. Oh, definitely. You know, it's something that uh, it's part of the traditions, you know, that, you know, we got to keep on, you know, because like with anything, you know, you kind of, you know, stop, you know, the traditions and, and that tradition just dies. And that's a sad thing to see. Yeah, I always is. thought. Yeah. And, you you know, know, what surprised me more than anything is really the price point, to be honest. Um, this is a 50X. The Greeley was a 50X. The Greeley was um, $880 fully custom all the way through i picked out my my sweatband my liner all that good stuff i i uh i went to lane lane charges uh laney charges uh four hundred dollars right now for his for his 50 x's all custom done wow. they, the, the the bodies the only difference is uh you know american and Greeley both get their bodies from portugal versus everybody else most of everybody right. gets their bodies out of winchester that are custom hatters right and, and that's the thing, you know, a lot of these guys, you know, they all want hats for, you know, $100, $150. But, again, that's that's taken away from the tradition. So, you know, folks that are, 
you know, young, you know, now they're, you know, finding themselves not wanting to build hats anymore. And and that would be a sad thing to see, you know. So, I mean, there's a reason why all these hats are a little bit more pricey. You know, they're, they're, they're good quality. And, and, again, they're part of the traditions, just like boot making. Exactly. And, you know, in 50 years' time, if we don't keep those traditions going and the youngins, you know, starting to make hats and boots and everything, uh, those traditions are going to die out. And, and soon all the boots and the hats are going to be coming from China and nobody wants to see that. You no, know, we yeah. want to see our own traditional things being made right here. You know, and 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 you know, custom craftsmanship. You know, that's just something we want to keep seeing. And you know, the only way that the youngins are gonna want to keep doing that in the future, so we could have that in the next fifty years, is if you know they they get paid well enough to you know match match the 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 pricing going up on everything. I yeah. hope we don't. You know, I hope we don't the, start uh, seeing a lot of that. the same way we were, we were talking. Go ahead. What was that, Joe? I was just going to say I hope we don't see a lot of. No, I, I was listening. I, I was just going to say I hope we don't uh, start seeing a lot of hats coming out of China. I mean, the boots is one thing, and we can try to fight that as much as we can, um, and and that's kind of. You know, it's it's really hard, especially when you got all these people saying, "We well, love Ariat, we love Ariat," and you know, it's. I I hope we don't start seeing that because I I think you know it's a Texas tradition, cowboy well, boots, cowboy hats. You know, um, and even though you know it started out in New York with uh, you know, J. B. Stetson and that um, boss of the plains, but. You know, it it became a Texas Texas tradition, and you know you got a lot of you got a lot of custom bootmakers down here in Texas, and so you know people need to start getting back to that. I know it's expensive, but that boot is going to last you an entire lifetime. You know, it's not gonna it's not gonna it's not a throwaway boot. You know, it is what it is, I guess. Yep. Yeah, that's what a lot of people don't understand on the, on the pricing of hats, man. Everybody's talking about man. I I can buy you know a hundred dollar wool you know wool say wool hat. It's about all you can get for hundred bucks now. But say I'll just I'll just beat it and throw it away and buy another one. I mean man, within two years if you're four or five in, you could have had something like this, and you could have had you a forty right. x or a fifty x hat that's going to last the next ten or fifteen years if you take care of it. I mean even if you beat yep. it to death, I mean I've seen fifty x's from the seventies that are just beat, but they're still holding shape. Yeah, because I mean it's quality. Yeah, I mean. Even if it even if it falls. And apart. the thing is, you know, you, you you buy like let's say an American hat, you know, forty X, you know, you beat it up in ten, fifteen years, send it right back to them, they'll 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 do it up for a hundred dollars. I think it's two fifty. You know, now. They, they'll they'll bring it back to you looking like brand new for a hundred bucks. I think it's two fifty now. Oh, $150? No, I think it's two fifty. Um, Ryan and I talked about that in my in my oh, video. I heard it was a hundred Ryan and I talked about that in my video, if I remember correctly. I thought it was two fifty. Yeah, I remember them telling me it was a hundred dollars, but maybe it might have gone up to a hundred fifty dollars. Make the website. But says however, it's still. I looked. Does it? Yeah, I think that's still. Well, it's it. Regardless, it's a heck of a yeah, deal. I mean, oh yeah, no matter what. You know, you, even if, you know. Yeah. Um, so. You know, even at two fifty, that's half the price of a new forty X, or, or less than half the price actually. But um, we need to put that on our list. And when we go back to, either when we stop in at American, or at, um, either when we stop in at Best Hat or when we're at Bowie, we need to ask them, you know, what's the price? Because I think it's set by. Yeah, we got to get that confirmation on that deal. I, I think, I'm sure there's a, probably a suggested retail, um, but it'll probably be set by the retailer because how I, envision that structured is you take it into a retailer and they're going to ship it to buoy and Bowie's going to remanufacture the hat ship it back and then you know the retailer is going to take a portion of that profit that's how i i think it works but we have to find out about that right or you could just send it to buoy yourself can you because that's a good question i, I wonder if you can call american 
and uh, I think that's an option right him. there. If you look at their last video, um, I think it was their uh, it wasn't their last video. It was their it was their Dallas show that they did in house because it was during COVID and they canceled the Dallas show. They talk about remanufacturing hats in that and the wording they used made it sound like it was kind of retailer based so i don't know we, that's something we need to ask too so write that down lionel we'll see if we can remember to ask yeah that. that's something nick next time i'm in um, next time i'm in cabiners i'll ask their manager about that because i guess that's something he would know as well if that's something that be, does to be done through the retailers <laughs> Joe, you work at Cavenders. You should know this, man. I don't deal with that. Um, you, know, you know, our Cavenders are so weird, man, because we're they're accounted as a Cavenders, but they're they're not connected with the other Cavenders stores. Right. It's, it's so weird. I need to know that store number because um, a lot of retail companies do that. You know, and I can find out the information on that if you tell me what store number it is. Um, I can look that up because I know we can pull from any Cavenders. They should be able to do it too. Maybe they don't know how. I don't know how that works, uh, but I can I can find out the information. Yeah. On that. And and as far as I mean, it's a little bitty store. I mean, that store probably ain't fifteen hundred square foot. Hmm. That is a tiny store. And then their uh, their east and west stores are a lot larger, but yeah, that's a small store. It, it was originally started up a house, and they expanded on a house back in the uh, they started back in the 70s I hated to see it go man it was a it was a family business and they just ended up selling everything to Cavenders heck in Texas they got Cavenders inside of 7-Elevens <laughs> no they don't no, I'm just kidding <laughs> but get yourself a Slurpee and an American hat freshly shaped <laughs> they there could. you go they could you know I'm they probably they probably wouldn't like me saying this but I think Cavenders got enough money um we don't need an enterprise. We don't need another Walmart. Uh, I, I appreciate the Cavenders is there, and they they they're putting Cavenders in places where they're needed, and you have the ability to pull from all these other stores and get stuff. I think they could be doing a lot better. Um, web orders are not available in the store. Um, you can do a store order if you go in you can order from any of the, the other stores but you can't call in to a store and say do you have this can you ship it to me you have to actually physically go in and, and place the order they won't let you do credit card orders over the phone so I think that's something they need to look at and, and I'm sure it's because of a fraud issue and, and probably chargebacks but that would make that would make it a lot better. Yeah, that was a that was a big issue when uh, you were helping me find that fifty fifty, and uh, yeah. you know we we called that store in Houston. That store in Houston had one and was going to put it away. And I got to you know there was two days I went to all my calendars to pay for it, and they called in, and that house was gone. They couldn't find it. Yeah, and and that's a problem, you know. And I probably could have. I probably could have transferred it to my store, um, but that you know that it becomes convoluted. If I'd have transferred it to my store and I bought it for you and then shipped it to you, then you know that would have been that probably would have caused other issues too. Um, the best way was to have your captors order it from the DFW store and you know and be done with it. Which you know, unfortunately, somebody dropped the ball and your hat got sold, evidently. But you wound up with one, didn't you? Yeah, it's crazy. The uh, I have not. Well, I I got that eight forty five I was looking for, but I d did not find a fifty fifty yet. Oh no! I uh, best hat has them, but it's in a four and a fourth. I'm I'm look, you know I I won't mess. I like my four and a half, at least if not my five inch brims, and that's something that they don't stock. But that is something that he told me last time I was on the phone. With him, they could order and it would take four to eight weeks to get. They, but he could get it made. How many weeks? Order, so, four to eight weeks. Yeah, that's not horrible. I mean, that that's really not horrible at this point. No, not at all. Yeah. Actually, 
Especially considering the, uh, what's going on with American right now and, uh, you know, the, the fact that they're pretty much out of uh, hassle next year. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. But what about that defective 7800 the other day? Which, I've, that, I've never seen anything like that of American. Oh, where, where he had the, the – it was kind of cracked here. Yeah, with the issue with the cattleman? I don't know. And, you know, without knowing – didn't he say he got that from Best Hat? Where did he say? I forget where he said he got it. I'm not sure where he said he got it from. I don't know if he even I thought he, I thought I asked, and I thought he said he got it from Best Hat. And um, to me, it looked like, you know, the, the the center crease was just a little too low, and you kind of got dipped into the, the venting, and that kind of weakened it. And I'm sure he probably grabs his hat harder than, than maybe I do. You know, it doesn't take a lot to get it off my head. So, so I don't... I don't really grab them very, you know, very roughly. I guess. I'm I mean, out, even I'm this not out one. Here and this is a in. pretty tall crown, but I'm not far from the missing. I hate I mean, clay. clay I lost. Crap on that hand. I mean, I'm squeezing that pretty hard. Okay, but like, I mean, I grabbed my my 7800. I mean, I'm just squeezing. I mean, I'm squeezing that hard. There's no give on that at all. And I mean, I'm not far from that venting at all. Yeah, you know, I have that uh, issue with. Uh, <clears throat> oh, I have that issue with my sixty-seven hundred. Uh, uh, is that a sixty-seven hundred? The one we have, Joe. The one uh, we we bought up in uh, North Carolina from that from that uh, Wild West store. Is it sixty-one hundred or sixty-seven? Was it the sixty-seven hundred? Sixty-seven hundred. Sixty-one hundred. I thought. Could be. Is that the one that's got like the swoop in 61. on the brim? Yeah. Um, uh, kind of real small arrows. venting through the center. It's kind of got the arrows that go around it in this small venting. Yeah, it's got it's it's more like a chevron. Yeah. It's got a bunch of little chevrons on there. Pretty sure that's the sixty one hundred. Yeah, I think it's sixty one hundred. Sixty one hundred. I'm looking okay. for that hat too. I, I forgot. What so, size you need? Uh, there might be some more at the Wild West store. Seven and three quarters. I'll look tomorrow. I gotta look for Lionel, and I gotta look for you. I'll look tomorrow. Let me know. Seven and three quarters. Yeah, let I'll me know look. what you have in a seven and three quarters on America. I'll look. Yeah, I, I'll let you know. I, we got a I can make a seven and five eights work. But, uh, it said seven and three so quarters. So tomorrow you got to look for a 6,100 and, and uh, some suspenders. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm on it. <laughs> the, uh, I'm going to make my so, note. I'll put it in my phone right now. I'll put it in there. Um, so the 6,100 that I have... Um, when I when I shaped it, I uh, I might have heated that one up a little too much. Now it's not the hat's fault, you know. It just I heated it up a little too much with my tea kettle, <laughs> and uh, I I made that issue myself. With uh, probably took off some of the the, the coating on it um, or the uh, the lacquer, and uh, that's where it made that little soft spot. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and get that hat to show y'all. All right, Lionel. What were you? So, uh, so yeah, this is um, the American I was talking to y'all about, and uh, basically I did a, I did the shape of it, but uh, they, you know I, I really had to heat it up to get that shape to go through, and um, I held you know the the point of it a bit too close. I don't know if y'all can see that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but uh, I made. See, it weakened it right here, and that's the same deal that that that, that fell on the on the uh, on the page head with the hats where they were um, where they had that deal right here. And um, yeah, it's just it's it's not the hat's fault. It's literally me from you know or whoever shaped it. You know, just kind of put a little too much heat on that one section, increased it too hard. Um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna weaken the the, the, str the weaving of the straw, but uh, it doesn't happen with most hats. And the reason why is because you know not everybody uh, oversteamed the hat and uh, makes that mistake. I did. So a, cu a couple things I want to talk about. Clay, were we doing mid uh, mid podcast hat change? <laughs> 
A little bit. I got warm. <laughs> okay. I, I still can't see you, Clay. I see him now. He's wearing a he's wearing a straw now. He's got his he's got his. You got an area uh, <laughs> internet connection there. Area I don't know what's going on with it, bro. I'll be honest. Oh, no, I see you. My, my internet's <laughs> usually pretty good. I, I don't know what's going on. We've been having issues out here, man. We've had a bunch of storms come through and knock out a bunch of lines. So that's probably what's oh, going yeah. on. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. But, um, yeah, I can see you now. But I've only had the opportunity to, um, I've only had the opportunity to shape one American straw. I get a lot of people who, well, first of all, we don't have a lot of Americans in a lot of sizes. You know, it, the, the hat shortage is real. And, um, you know, we can only do so much. I could sell an American every day if we had them. Um, but I, so I've, I've had the opportunity to shape one American. And I do a lot of Stetson. I do a lot of um, Cavender's brand. I do a lot of uh, not too many resist holes. Um, Rafter C. But shaping an American. What's your opinion on the rafter seas? The styles are good. Um, they look like an American hat. They're they're using the same bodies. I mentioned that in a post the other day, several weeks ago, I think it was. And uh, somebody from American commented that you know they're getting the bodies from the same place, so you can get a 6100 um, rafter C that looks exactly like a 61, you know, 100 American, but it it's shapes differently. American, you know, their finish, first of all, the hat band American uses is much better. Um, not, I'm sorry, the sweatband. The sweatband's much better. The the hat band American uses is, uh, you know, it's it's a ribbon, but it's, it's amazing compared to what... Um, resist all uses I, I in my you know in my uh, my straw video I showed that you know that resist all it, you know it's a $150 hat $30 more you get an American it's worth it to me not to have to steam a ribbon every time I put it on <laughs> not only that the American is just a it's got a, a quality of feel that is so much better than that than that resist all it's just so much better hat, and when you go to shape, when you go yep. to shape an American, I, it it completely it's a completely different animal than shaping Resist All, Rafter C, um, Cavender's brand, any any of those. You know, I haven't had the opportunity to 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 work on um, Radio King, but from the appearance, they look like a pretty good hat. That's what this one is here. This is their their new. One of their new styles for this year, the Radio King Cross. It'd be interesting to, you know, heat that up and see how it, how it works. That American, it shapes like a felt. Um, the American straw shapes like a felt. It's smooth. And the only regret I have on... Yeah, they shape a whole lot better than... than... Go ahead. Oh, I was saying it, it, it does shape a lot better than a lot of the... Uh... The other straw hats that I've shaped myself, and I've only done like a few from Resist All and such, you know. But um, yeah, the American uh, American Hat Company sure does, you know, uh, shape a little bit easier than uh, than any of the other ones. It's it's night in the day, straw line, in my opinion. and and in their felt line. But then again, this is the the Americans shape very well, but uh, I began to shape that 845, and that's a different, that polyrip is a different monster. It's very interesting how it shapes. Yeah, I'd like to try that, too. Um, I've done Bangora, yeah. I've, and Bangora, to me, the only problem with Bangora is it wants to it wants to go back. So if you, if you shape a Bangora, say you put a center crease in it, and then you go to do your side creases uh, or your, your divots, <laughs> the center crease wants to pop out, you know. So you have to you have to be careful. It wants to go back to its natural state. It doesn't like to doesn't like to change. Poly rip was the same way. We were having issues getting that poly rip to hold a brick, okay. and you literally had to pretty much just hold your crease in shape until the hat cooled down. Yes, and I use a fan. And uh, you get that thing warm, and it it's like it's like a straw without lacquer completely. It just it goes so soft. Yeah. And then on the same hand, the way that material is, I mean, you know, that's what they, you know, 
I was talking to Best Hat, and he pretty much calls it a pop through. One of the guys called it a pop through hat. He goes, "Man, if you step on it with a horse, you can punch it back through, and you're fine." I mean, we yep. just, that whole brim on that hat was shaped without any steam at all. <laughs> it was all all yep. through the wire, and the way that that material is, and it bends. It'll bend and stay in place without any type of you know steam. Mm-hmm. Well, I think uh, I've had a lot of um, straws shaped, and um, this. This uh, 7800 I'm wearing was shaped by Ryan at Best Hat when I did that video, and this is probably my favorite, my favorite brim shape now. And I mean, he just did a, a tremendous job on this hat. And as a matter of fact, I think my next, my next felt will uh, will get this brim shape. I really like it. It looks Pretty good. Great looking hat. I must say. It's um. Your hat looks great too, Clay. Thank you. Yeah, everybody's hat looks great, man. You put a hat on. I can't take the credit on this one though. Uh, Tech Tech's up at Take the Reins did this one for me. He knocked this thing out real real quick, little CHL action. And then uh. Nice. Rodeo King Coffee <laughs> in America. Uh, that's a that's a pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, Tech says this. When I first the, saw that. This is Tech when the I first pass. saw that Rodeo King patch, I'm like, I'm like, who the heck crossed that up? <laughs> Well, you know, you know, you say you say they're copying American, but if you look, you know, Resist All's got their patch yeah, as well. But everybody's got a patch. But the funniest thing that I've seen on the Rodeo King pages of this feller that went ahead and uh, grabbed an American uh, <laughs> patch and a Positive Time patch and that. slapped it right there on a Rodeo King. I'm like, uh, okay, buddy. <laughs> Man, I'm trying. I'm trying to get the guy that makes the, these custom hats for us. Uh, uh, Laney does the Lane Creek stuff. I'm trying to get him to make some patches for his hats, man. He's he, he's got a little magnet that he gives guy every guy's a little uh, refrigerator magnet. That's a perfect size for a patch, man. I'm doing some. Like all you gotta do next. is take it to somebody and then I'll make yeah. you a, a stick side patch and it'd be perfect. And you have a patch for all your hats. Oh yeah. I'm doing some patches. Uh, I've got T-shirts coming out this week. And then the next step is patches. So, uh, nice. you know, first I'm just going to do the, um, the Cowboy Cartel logo. Uh, I think it'll look pretty cool on a patch. And then uh, we're going to work on some, some pretty cool patches, maybe some feathers. Um, you know, everybody likes these feathers. And I like the feathers. You know, I've got, I got a feather on every, um, every stroll I got. It's got a feather on it of some sort, you know. Um, I just think they look good on a on a nice. on a stroll, so I'll make my own. I like the feathers a lot as well. That's yep, a, I got to go pick me one up when I go to Texas. <laughs> oh, we'll get you one. I need to order got, me some uh, feathers. American ones. I got a. I got a bird here. I could probably pick one off of him while hey, he's asleep. Um, Clay, you uh, you like the American feathers that I have? You see that American feather I have? The the patch. Yeah. You like that? Yeah, those are nice. Shoot me your address in a text. I'll send you one. Oh, sweet. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. You, uh, I know me and me and Lionel talked about I, I, when you first released your logo. I, I don't know if you remember the first thing I texted you was like, "You got to make a patch out of that." Yeah, I remember that. Yep. Yeah, that's 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 going to be something in the works. Right now, I'm actually uh, working on releasing the t-shirts myself. Yeah, it's it's a you good know, logo. If if the people overseas don't beat you to it, <laughs> huh? So as long as the people overseas don't beat you to it. Oh, uh, they've already have. <laughs> Dude, that's that's the word. I don't. I, I probably delete three to four posts a day on the American page, all the time. It's the same mm-hmm. thing. They're a mug. Or a hat, or a shirt. Yes. Yeah, and thank God it's gone down on the on the cowboy boots, hats, and Western Life enthusiast page because that was just crazy. There was so many spams and everything until we turned the group private, and now it's 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 been much better ever since we turned it private. So I think we um, blocked so many on the American page, and slowed it down. I haven't seen any here recently. Well, you know, yeah, we um we had that conversation about it and then we added uh three or four new moderators um specifically to combat the the spam when i was on vacation 
um, I think I mentioned this in, in a group post, you know, I, I was, I was watching a movie with my wife, checking the phone, um, every five minutes, just trying to kill spammers because it was, I don't know what happened in that week. It just got really bad. So when I got back, we added three new moderators. We opened it up to a, a lot of, uh, the American hat company people, uh, you know, we appreciate them. And, and I think absolutely anybody from American Hat who wants to help out, you know, whether it be, you know, uh, in a moderator capacity or in, in posting, um, you know, giving information, I think absolutely it's welcome. We'll make anybody from American uh, a moderator. And, you know, this is their, it's their company. You know, we're just here to support them and, and tell them thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, but, I, I um, love how many people we do have from America on the page. I think almost every time somebody posts, I see somebody comment from America. Well, it's funny because, <laughs> I, you know, I get I get messages. You know, what, what, when you got a group with, I think we're a little over 11,000 this, this afternoon. When you get a, a group with that many people, I get I get tons of messages every day. Which is, you know, it surprised me at, you know, how how many messages I, I i guess i didn't expect it how many people contact me and they they contact me through various different ways you know it's either facebook messenger or um uh, instagram i get um youtube comments so and well, we've got an email now that's another reason i created the cowboy cartel brand and um and page was kind of to help with that because my, my Facebook's my personal, you know, it's my kids, my my family and my, you know, my, my parents, whatever. And, you know, it's a personal page. So, you know, I don't mind talking to these people and I don't mind answering questions. That's that's kind of what we're here for. But, you know, it, it, it can't take over my entire life. So so we created a, an outlet for that and, mm -hmm. and, and to help with that. But, but the thing that interested me was when I called American, because we've, we've had so many people ask about patches and how do you get patches and where do you get patches, that I called American and I said, hey, give me the lowdown on the patches. I need, I need the full story, you know, what's going on here, uh, where do you get them, how do you get them, is it taking this long, do you have supply issues? And we answered that in a, in a group post that explained everything. And this is all information direct from America. But when I was on that call, this goes back to the, the spammers and how many people from American look at our page. Um, my contact in American said, so, you know, we saw recently people selling American hats or American um, t-shirts. And I said, yeah, that's a spammer. We got rid of them as soon as we could. Um, she's like, okay, good. We were concerned yep. that it, you know, it was maybe somebody that you were dealing with and they were making making t-shirts I said no we would never allow that on the page you know it's your brand it's your logo it's it's trademark we're not we're not promoting that and we're not allowing that on there so they appreciated that but that also shows that American is is actively watching and they're involved you know it's not they don't have anything to do with us and they don't have any say over what we do there but ultimately it is it is their brand and you know, we appreciate them and, and we're enthusiasts and that's why we're here. Yep. Good yeah, point, Joe. I, uh, when I ordered this 7800 from American, I put in the comments just that, you know, I asked for the patches to be put on and, you know, everything comes in and out of the best hat, has the patches. Well, they sent me eight set of patches with that hat. So I've been giving them away. I mean, every, almost every time I walk into cabiners, I have three or four sets in my pocket for somebody that buys an American that I give to them. I've got two more right here. There you go. So if somebody really wants a patch, if you want to send me an address, I'll send these to somebody. Because, I mean, I, I've, all my hats are patched. I, I'll buy from has best hat. Everything I get in American is going to be almost the best hat all the time. So I've got patches. That's great. So if somebody really needs patches, let me know. Well, now you're going to get 400 requests yep. for patches, and you've only got two. <laughs> hey, first two people you can there have. There you them. go. There you go. That's great. Appreciate that. <laughs> I'll, I'll throw them in an envelope, and I'll send them to you in the mail. 
way to give back. That's gotta do a, a lottery <laughs> reel. There we go. We'll we'll, we'll do a, we'll do a ten thousand ten thousand ten thousand people give away with two patches. I'm uh I'm actually planning. First ten ten thousand uh to like this video, we'll get the there patch. Twenty thousand, we'll get the second <laughs> one. Uh, so I'm actually working on a, this is something, this is great. We've got the three of us here. Let's talk about this. Um, I'm actually working on a, a giveaway idea at the moment. And, uh, you know, I'm going to give away a set of patches. And I might give away an old school patch. And I'll probably give away a feather and a t-shirt and a couple other things. We'll see what we got. But what I want to do is create a post, um, best American hat picture as voted on by the members the most likes gets um, you know wins probably do for second place maybe third I haven't I haven't worked out all the details yet but we're gonna do it and hopefully um, hopefully that'll drive engagement and we're gonna get some really cool hat pictures because you know there's a now, question, Joe. Do you have to wear your hat, or do you have to just nope. display it? I, I think it's just the best picture of a hat. It could be hanging on a fence post with a horse taking a dump behind it. You know, <laughs> 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 whatever gets the, whatever gets the most thumbs up, I think would uh, probably take it. You know, it's just it's got to be a picture of an American hat, and it's got to be recognizable as an American hat, either you know patched up in the back you know take a picture from the back with the uh, where you can see the um, the flag pin or you know 7800 you know it's a recognizable hat I, I haven't seen any other brands that looks exactly like the 7800 yet I mean we may soon I, the rafter C's got one that's similar but it's, it's definitely not the same resist all makes one but you can definitely tell a difference I've got that hat. It's actually Lionel's now. I'm going to grab it. <laughs> uh, speaking of the old patch, I, I remember when Joe posted the old patch. And I was like, dude, I got to get one. He's like, I had my ways. Well, I ended up finding one for this hat. Man, I love that old. Oh, there you go. That old school American. Dude, I love, you know what? The, 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 um, was uh, one of the guys from American that actually posted on the American group about which one you like the best, the old uh, old version or the more blocky version or the new version. And uh, I have initially said the new version. And now, uh, you know, kind of like looking at the blocky one, I'm like, you know what, I'm, that's starting to grow on me. I think I'm liking that one a lot better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the way I got that was a funny story. That Cavenders that used to be a horse town, they bought it out, they had a massive mirror and their hat room. Well, Cavenders came in and reno renovated the entire place and moved their hat room, and they were getting rid of that mirror. And the manager was there, and I was like, hey, y'all getting rid of that mirror? He's like, yeah, somebody bought it. I go, what about the patches on it? He's like, what do you mean? He's like, did, did the dude buy the patches on it, too? He's like, now we're going to pull them off. I go, can I have that old-school American hat patch? <laughs> and I pulled it right off the mirror, man. That thing, we steamed it up and threw it on the hat, man. It still sticks on and that manager's been there since the 80s, and he said it like in 82 when he got, like, you know, early 80s, that, that patch was around. Dang. I'll tell you what, Clay, I'll send you... Um, you, you don't just got a patch, you got a piece of history right there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Clay, um, I've got some adhesive um, because... What, what I got on the back of this one? I got the regular one on this one. But um, those old school patches, they... The ones I have don't stick very well and I had to use I had to use some adhesive for it so I'll send you an extra set of uh, adhesive for it it fits right on the back of it so in case you need to need to stick that on a little better I'll send that with uh, with the uh, awesome the, the, the feather Sweet, hat. yeah I'll, I'll I'll shoot it to you when we get down here is this the um, is this the hat you were talking about the resist all yeah so yeah you can see yep, that's it you can see it's definitely um, it's definitely different. It's a lot smaller uh, pattern, but uh, this is Lionel's hat. Yeah. This is Lionel's hat. He's gonna get he's gonna get this one. Those diamond shapes are smaller. Yeah, he's gonna get this when he comes. It's a different color too. I don't. You can't see it. In Thanks, this, brother. Uh, can't see it in this light, but it's a different color. It's a lighter. It's a whiter hat. Um, but uh, 
Here's something I just noticed between those two, too. Ours are different. Are they? At least on the hat band, ours is different. Oh, yeah, we talked about that. It's because I don't, I have a ribbon band, but I don't you have. You have the. Yeah, I've got a thicker ribbon. You get the ribbon that, uh, you get, I've got the same one on my 50-50. I don't, I wonder how much, like, if that's something you do when you, when they order them, or if that's something that just switch per hat. Like, I don't know. It is an option. I don't know. You know, it's weird, because I've seen several hats with different, uh, different, uh, bands, like, as far as the color, because, uh, Clay, yours looks more like a coyote color. Yeah. And his looks more like a Sahara. And then on this one here, I just got a black one. Yeah, my 845 is that, that same style band, but it's black. Also yep. something, I don't know if they do it with just the poly rope, but I've never seen it. But, you know, Joe, Joe might know more being around them a little bit more, but that's got a black hat band. I usually only ever see, like, the brown hat bands on the straws. Uh, well, Lionel's got a black yeah. one there. Well, I, I've, seen a, I've seen a couple of brown hat Um. That and then I saw the y'all sixty one hundred. Y'all sixty one hundred of, of the leather hat band. Yeah, this one's right here, sixty one hundred. Okay. This one's got a black hat band. Go. What uh, well, what's the sweatband on? Is it a leather sweatband? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, the sweatband is uh, brown. It's leather. Yeah, see, it's got a black sweatband, and then the the boot barn and Valdosta had a, had one of those with a dialect sweatband in it. Yeah, I've seen I've seen. I like that brown uh, hat band better. I've seen the um, that that um, what is it the microfiber flex? I forget what they call it the flex hat band, and that's usually in it's usually in the oh, yeah. 15x or 15 star hats. Um, I think all of the it's I think it's an option, but all of the um, the standard 20x 20 star hats come with uh, leather. Now I think the I. You know, don't quote me on this, but I think the 15 star hats leather is a thinner material and maybe fiber backed. Can't guarantee. What do you got there? Is that a that's a 20x, right? It's a 20 star. Yeah, that's a 20 star. Yeah. I'd never, yeah, this one I'd never is even look to check and see what it is. So. From my what understanding, just looking at the just looking at the website, these are a twenty. These these are a twenty. Twenty X. These are a twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. <laughs> they just wanted to do one up on American. Is what they did. It's just and it's like oh y'all making twenty X stars in a row right here in the front. It's just it's twenty five stars all the way around, all the way across the front. <laughs> Heck, they're gonna be like, that's five more stars than we than the Americans. I'll tell you what, though, man. <laughs> they can write it down. This is definitely a lot thinner of a of a sweatband compared to the Americans. Mm -hmm. It's it's pretty thin. Yeah. But you're looking at a lot. No, this is nice point. thick leather. I mean, that's a hundred. Even in the stress. That's a hundred ninety dollar hat. This is a hundred thirty dollar hat. So, there's definitely a price difference there. And if you look at the forty X, I mean. Uh, maybe it's not much of a different leather from the from the forty X to the to the straw. No, it's the same. Yeah, but, American definitely you know, uses a, they use a great leather for their sweatbands. Yeah. Yeah, and that and that kind of goes back to what they were saying that you know no matter you know how many X's the hat is, they're going to make it with the same great quality. They're going to build it the same great quality, you know. Just the only thing that changes is the material that they use on the uh, body of the hat, and then everything else is just going to be the same great quality. Now I can't speak for the for that sweatband uh, deal, but um, I have that sweatband on my uh, on my other resist all straws, and per, per, personally, I don't like it. I, I would stick to any leather band. It's just so much better and cooler at the end of the day. You know, it feels a, stuffy. Yeah, I had a Rodeo King Jute with that same hat band. And uh, I actually went the same size and did it. It was a lot tighter of a fit, too. Like yep, yep, yep. Yeah, because it, it doesn't uh, expand as much and it's just, it's, it's fibers, you know, and it just kind of uh, creates this... Uh, Kind of a feel like uh, like you're, you you got like cloth on your on your forehead, 
and that's not a comfortable feel at all. They, the yeah. market is the best thing for working in, man. But I, that poly, that poly rope straw to me with that that general leather hat band, the leather leather sweatband, it's the best way to go, man. I work in it every day. Yeah, I mean, it sounds good on uh, on paper. It sounds like yeah, that would make sense, you know. Just put on a a, a sweatband, you know. It's just like wearing a sweatband in in in, in a helmet, but. It, it, it's not a fact you know it's just once you got the the hat fitting on you good and it's cooler you're just gonna sweat less with leather than with that thing anyway well, that thing just kind of clogs up the pores you know it just well the, the, a big 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 thing <laughs> me and joe i've seen joe post about it with the 50 50 especially in the summer if you're going to be working in one of these hats you've got to have good venting yes uh, that's yep. that's your biggest lifesaver, or something with a good vent. I, I see people, yep, I see people definitely. come in all the time, or a good, and they they want that traditional, you know, all straw, no venting, with the three grommets on each side. You know, the the traditional Stetson, George Strait looking, the classic George Strait. There you go. The, yeah, I have one of those George Strait uh, resistals. Yeah, I've got one too somewhere. People, that's people my, want my first hats. People want those, or yep. they want those super heavy palms with no venting. And I, my first question is, what are you gonna do? What are you doing with this hat? I don't know how people wear those yeah. things. I want to work I have in the no yard, idea. or I want to mow the grass, or you know, I want to work in the farm. You know, I said you don't want that hat. That's not. You are gonna get so hot in that hat. You might as well, well might as well wear felt. You know, it's it's just, it's not right. You want something with a lot of venting if you're going to be outside. If you're going to go to an indoor event, you're going to go to a wedding, of course, this is a classic hat. That's what you want. But if you're going to be doing anything in it, you want something with great venting. Because that's that's the idea of a felt, or a straw. You know, it's, it's to keep you cooler in the summer months. Th that's what it's for. It's a lighter hat, you know. And I wear... I wear um, <coughs> one size smaller in a straw to keep it on in the wind. Um, the 50-50 has got so much venting, you know, the wind blows right through it. It stays on perfectly. I've never had uh, an opportunity or, or uh, an instance where I needed to, to grab my hat to hold it on. Wearing the 50-50 and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's trial and error. Um, really you know you gotta find out what's what's right for you and you can't just go i'm gonna grab a palm every year because that's what i wear in the summer and be miserable in it you know you've got to try something new yeah i, uh, I feel like go ahead oh sorry i feel like palms are more for like uh people that are uh that like to uh go to the beach and you know, and again, that's not the best thing to wear, but it just kind of gives you that little bit of an island vibe and whatnot. And, you know, I, I, it's more of a novelty thing than anything. So if you're going to be wearing a palm hat, either you're a tourist out on a, you know, going out to the beach or you're Jason Aldean. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Jason Aldeans. <laughs> hey, man, as long as they're not wearing a plastic Those hat. Jason Aldeans, man. They, we oh, yeah. With or without the. Go ahead. Oh man, oh no, uh, no that the the those Jason Aldean hats, yeah, they're uh, they they got that deal in them where uh, it's uh, one size fits most. I'll tell you what, um, they smell horrible. Uh, they're interesting. Horrible. There's there's a, a corner. The, the Jason Aldean hats are in a corner um, in our lower end hats because they're they're cheap hats and. You know, they're palm, and they've got some kind of lacquer on them to, to make them that color. But they smell horrible. And uh, you put any kind of steam on them at all, and I'm, I'm gagging the entire time. Uh, I, I tend to say, you know what? I think that rim Ooh. shape looks good on you the way it is. You don't need to change anything because I don't want to steam it. <laughs> Who produces them? <laughs> man, don't you want to look like Jason Aldean, man? I want Come to on. Resist all, but I could be wrong. I, I don't even know who Jason Aldean is, man. I, if if it, if his face no, was it, on 
every one of those damn hats, I would have no idea who the guy is. The only reason I know where he, who he is is because he's from Georgia. <laughs> it's the only reason. It is resistible. It makes it, though. Yeah, is I it? think so. Yeah, you're right. Yep. I can't believe I wouldn't put my name on that on that hat being such okay. a... I got to change um, my battery. Sorry. Being such a famous... Uh, did, you get the, did you get the battery empty, too? Yep. Yep. You got to get yourself another beer there, Joe. Well, You're while, running out of juice. While he's dealing with that and talking about the palm and stuff, man, I, if, if anybody wants a hat to work outside, I challenge you to go find an 845 American. That uh, that hat will change your life for working outside. And I work outside a lot. A lot of uh, a lot of work in our yard at work and uh, a lot of it you know, in the middle of the sun, and it makes a massive difference. That five it's nicely difference. vented, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's a great vent. Man, it's it's a uh, it's a strong, you know. I mean, I've I've whacked the crap out of it on sides of trucks and stuff. Man, that thing holds shape like nothing else. Oh yeah, man. I mean, trust me. I you know down at the rodeo, I, I see a lot of folks or guys that just, you know, they're all there bull riding. You know, they get knocked off the bulls. You know, they go ahead and pick that hat up. You know, ride away. Just you know, kind of give it a little mule kick on it and get back get back to the get back to the shoots. You know. Like it's, you know, nothing. And I look at those American hats. Most guys, by the way, at the, uh, uh, you know, at, at the rodeo, they're they're all wearing American hats, and or the most of them at least. And uh, when that when that brim gets knocked in, or whatever, just he just pops it back out, and it's perfectly fine. On my back. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're we back. We got you. We, now we know how long uh, a battery lasts on uh, there you are. Olympus camera. <laughs> <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, Where were um, we? So, oh, uh, Jason Aldean <laughs> or, and his hat. He, he, he's a singer, right? I know he's a singer because it's a concert hat. And it's like, it's like 30 bucks, $35, or something like that. Right, singer, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, Jason Aldean. I mean, he makes some good music. His earlier stuff was really good. His his first album. Was really yeah. A, a lot of them. It's kind of like uh, Zach Brown Band. A lot of his earlier stuff, uh, you know, was great. And then after that, he started kind of going a little bit away from country and kind of mixing it up with other stuff and I'm like okay that still sounds pretty good and then it's just like wait is that even country yeah, anymore album four or five it was yeah it's, it's just it's like whoa well you went way out there buddy okay I, so. this, this is just not even country anymore <laughs> yeah exactly and I'm like man listen I mean just you know stick to it I like um, I like yeah. Zach Brown let me ask you this Joe because yeah. this, this isn't it yeah. Oh, yeah, I do too. This is an issue that they've been having in our local stores. Have y'all had a lot of issues with the, the, the uh, Kojo Resistals coming in? Like real soft on the crowns? Not that I am aware of. The special or the regular $40 one? The, uh, the, 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 I think they call it the, the felts, not, not the, not the straws. The, the Kojo, like, so the Cody Johnson deal. Yeah, like they're they're six X's. So not that I'm aware of. Um, so are you talking about an open crown resist all or? <coughs> no, they're they're already pre shaped. Okay. So they're you know like the Cody Johnson brick and everything. I have not noticed that. I sold um, I sold a couple of resist alls the other day and. I have, not, I have not noticed that. Where are you seeing that at? They had two on display over there that they were using as a display model at, a, at Cavender's. And, man, you're talking about you can just grab the top and it'll crush in your hand. It's so soft. Hmm. I mean, there's absolutely no firmness to that hat Well, at all. I mean, it could be... Straight from Resistol. It, well, it could have been how long was it on the shelf, how many people have handled it. Because I've got my 10X American has a really soft crown compared to my other hats and that's that's a product of um it's got a lot of wear on it you know i could take it in i could 
I could throw some stiffener on it and you know be good to go but uh, it's gonna it's gonna be for sale soon actually everything I, I was talking to Lionel about this my 7x my 10x my 40x are all out the door here soon yeah that one uh, uh, they came straight off the box that way which is what was interesting to me I was there when they pulled them out as they came in off the well, truck and okay so this is something I was going to talk about earlier in my opinion Stetson resist all Stetson is a monster. Um, you know, they make, they've got their own felting process. They've got their own beetle farm to make stiffener. Um, you know, they make every portion of that hat start to finish. And I applaud that. And that is probably my only complaint about American is that they are not felting their own hats. But Stetson Resistol has this mindset where we can crank out all these hats and damn <coughs> the quality just to get the hat out there. I don't like that. And, you know, I talked about that in the Resistol straw um, and its quality, you know, a $150 hat compared to a $130 or $180, $190 American, it's, there's no comparison. You know, that resist all is a piece of junk. In comparison, and for what you're paying for, I just don't think the quality is there with Stetson and resist all. They've got a name, and I think they are, they're doing a disservice to that name for what they're producing. Um, they've got all of these pre-shaped hats that they're selling left and right for $250. You know, 6X um, Skyline, great hat great entry-level hat $250 you know it's it's a nice hat it's, yeah it's I like nice mine I, I'm not you know I'm not gonna take any way anything away from that but you know it's it's every portion of it's made here but as it as a whole their quality is poor and I just I, I got a problem with them you know I, I I have a 7X. Um, it, when you jump, and this might be an entire video, but when you jump from um, a 6X Skyline out of the box, you know, pre shaped hat to a 7X Open Crown Stetson, it's a factor of 10 difference. You know, the, the felting is different, the body is different. You know, it's, it's like going. I would put the, the 7X, now, people aren't going to like this, but I will put a 7X Open Crown Stetson next to a 10X American. And they're comparable in price. And I think that is the quality right there. Um, 7X Stetson, 10X American is... is Talking about 10X Resist all this. It, okay, okay. So I, I haven't dealt with a lot of... Uh, or my, seven, my, my 7X Open Crown Resist all is okay. that way. I haven't dealt with a lot of resist all, but but I do have that Stetson. Yeah, I got it. I go ahead. I gotta say, I I've had my six X Stetson uh, Skyline for you know several months, um, almost a year actually now, and that hat's been been great. And you know when I when I first got it, it it was awesome, but when I got the Rodeo King Ten X, it, it was. Uh, quite a bit different, of a diff, you know, better mm -hmm. feel, and uh, then jumping onto the 40x American, man, that was just like I, I don't even want to. Sometimes I pick up my 10x Stetson thinking I had a really nice felt hat, and you know, or the 6x Stetson uh, thinking I had a really great hat, and then I, you know, I pick it up after having picked up my American the other day. I'm like, wait, man, this is man, this feels like. Somebody forgot to, you know, put a sending down on that hat, and I mean it's it's just what it is. But essentially, when I bought that hat, I uh, I went with the 4X Apache, and I returned it right away and and got you know the the 6X and you know well the you know it, it, the 4X was a wool hat. I got the 6X Skyline, and that felt a whole lot different. That felt way better. 
but again you know once you spend the extra money you know you, you do feel the quality difference and and you know you, you got some say you know i got i got a good hat that i could literally pass on my children instead of saying i got a hat that's going to look all all old and beat up by the time you know it reaches my my my, my kid you know what I, I mean? I agree, and but I think there's something to be said for you know a hat that's a little worn and beat up. I, you know, I think it looks great. Um, you know, I've got a I've got a 40x I've got a 40x yep. um, American, and I love the hat. It's a great hat. It's just not a color for me. You know, and I, my 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 40x is black, and that was just what I could get at the time. I wanted a 40x, and and. Um, it, it is what it is, you know, that, that, and it goes back to availability and and what you can get. You know, I've got the the seven X um, black cherry because I wanted um you know I wanted a chocolate and that was the closest I could get. You can't get a chocolate right now, you know. Supply and demand, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Speaking on the uh, the, the resist all Stetson thing, I mean, I've had this this hat here is five years old. It's a seven X resist all Ridgely open crown hat, man. And it's still still great, great shape. It's held out very well. I mean I'm sure, so looks great. Ten X American, to be honest. I mean, I'm very surprised how well this hat's held. But it's a pre COVID hat too. Right. And that made a massive difference in this industry on everything. Oh. Unfortunately it's just yeah. it, I mean it's a little it's starting to get a little soft. There's a little bit of softness to it. This 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 was originally a uh, a minic, then a brick, and then I reblocked it this recent year to a CHL. I mean, it's still just a great, great wearing hat, man. It's comfortable. It's you know, it'll hold. Yeah, it looks yeah, great. Looking hat. And I beat the crap out of this. Is my beat up hat, man. And it's just, it's a good hat. And it's funny, Clay. Earlier you were you were mentioning, you know, like about those uh, Cody Johnson resist all deal uh, that they were uh, that they were getting soft on the. Uh, on the on the top of the crown when you were you know where you were handling it and uh i you know i noticed that with my rodeo king uh the rodeo king you know and i have like i said i have the 6x uh stetson skyline and i have the uh the 40x american right here and um this 10x uh um rodeo king it's it's much softer where you handle it you know it kind of Every time I grab it, you know, it's a cattleman shape. So every time I grab it like this, you know, it kind of squeezes in. So just kind of pretty much like the deal you were talking about with the, uh, with the uh, um, Cody Johnson resist all. Yeah. But I think, you know, that, that just might be from, you know, um, you know, it could also be from like heat, you know, at the time of shaping or whatever, you know, the way it was handled or, how you know some things like that but um yeah it's just i guess some hats just just do that but i've never had that issue with an american or uh even with my stetson yeah the uh i've see, rodeo king to me is very weird how they do things like um it's almost like they send different quality controlled hats to different places because i mean i I've seen seven X's and ten X's come in at Cavender's, man. They feel like sandpaper. And then I go up to my guy up in that just does just pure rodeo king as a dealer, and his hats are almost comparable to like an American, and it's yeah. completely weird. Like you know, the same experience I had that ten X rodeo king I had that I sold that had the um, we put a diamond in it with a cross, and I posted it. Yeah. I love that thing, and I sold it to a guy. And that hat was, it was good, but it just, it had its flaws. It wasn't finished very well. And then I went up right. and looked at the same exact 10X buckskin from that, from my guy up there, and dude, it, it was a comparable to like a 10X American. So I don't know what well, that they That was just, a sweet crease there too. I, I don't know if they're, they're just pushing out hats to Cavenders to get hats out because they're ordering so many, and they're taking more time with, with somebody like him to give them a little bit better quality of a hat or what's going on there. Yeah, and try to get a hold of their customer service. I don't know how he did, which, you know. I don't know. I've never seen their customer service. I've looked up their numbers, and I couldn't find one. I tried to reach them on Instagram. That's one thing I didn't like about it. There's, like, no personality to it. But apparently they're owned by a big hat company that makes uh, 
hats for different uh, or makes the different style of hats for uh, uh, you know law enforcement and different a bunch yeah. of different things but yeah, they, they have different brands in their lines and uh, Rodeo King is their Western yeah, line yeah, yeah the only, and, really the uh, only thing I know yeah. about Rodeo King is just they're based out of New Jersey that's the only thing I can yeah. really ever find yeah and that's but I mean they're they're having an issue just like everybody else did uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of one of the things my my guy up yeah. there was that's kind of one of the things about Rodeo King is um, you know they don't have any presence online can't find out any information about them and it's kind of a secret and i don't know what that is that that kind of pushes me away that kind of pushes yep. me away from exactly from radio king but uh going back to what you said about one hat feeling like sandpaper and another one being smooth um 7x american is kind of the same way and i'm wondering if it's maybe the the dyes used because my my black cherry 7x american is really rough and i had to brush that thing continuously just to get it a little softer and i don't like the way it looks in in pictures um in sunlight it just it doesn't look as good but you take maybe a steel or a buckskin or a midnight blue something a little softer than that really dark almost black dark brown black you know cherry it, it looks better you know it looks better it feels better it, it feels completely different so that's that's my biggest complaint about the the 7x that i have Yeah, I've uh, I've seen some interesting stuff for the Seven Xs. They had one come in from American during the height of COVID. You, it, it was almost like you could feel the rabbit <laughs> that was in it. Like it just it hadn't been it wasn't burnt and finished enough. Right. It was just weird. It's kind of like the the deal that I uh, actually wh whatever you just described right there it wasn't even as bad as. Um, when I did the review on the new Tacovas hat that they just released, I don't know if you saw it, Clay. <laughs> oh, oh, I saw it. That was yep. great. I was I was looking into those hats to get one because there's there's a massive to go Tacova place right below us in Atlanta, the, a big store yep. they have them there, and I was gonna go in and look at them. And as soon as you did that review, I, yep. I changed my plans. I wasn't gonna buy one. I just wanted yep. to go and look at them and, and see what to go. Yeah, was. well, <laughs> that hat. I just ordered it just to uh, just to do the review, knowing that I wasn't gonna like it, cause uh, it's 100% rabbit fur, and there's nothing wrong with that. But man, the finish on that hat was so rough. Uh, I, you know, I mean, you know, even when you when you grab a 7x or a 6x hat, you know, you, you touch the felt, it's rough. You know, you you, you got some of the hair popping up, but uh, you know, it, it's 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 it stays sticking on there. You know, but literally, like you know, I was like touching it, and I swear I felt like I was, uh, like I was touching a, a, a old dog, because the the fur just kept falling off and coming on my hands, and I'm like, you know, like if you're allergic, don't buy this. Well, hat. I just got banned from buying any more. Some of the you know? I felt are that same way. Really? Yeah. Which that's huh. something I don't I don't know Joe if that's something that you're also a lot of but the, our local cavenders man people kill they eat up those Tratelli hats. The Ceratelli? Yes, yeah, Ceratelli. Yeah. So, interesting note on that. Ceratelli. Um, I don't know what's going on with cavenders and Ceratelli. I know that they make the cavenders brand belts and it's a good hat for the price it's it's a much better so uh, let's say let's say a 6x cavender's brand made by Saratelli is 120 or 220 dollars roughly well you take a 6x Saratelli Cer and that's like a 300 and $20 hat, it's more than a resist all. 
you know, 6X. And I've had people come in and I said, I would not buy that hat. If you want a black 6X hat, look at the skyline for $250. Feel the difference here. Just just feel the difference. It's a, it's yeah. a poor, the Ceratelli is a piece of shit. I don't know how or why they sell so many of them, but uh, luckily, but luckily, um, Ceratelli is on clearance, at least at the South Austin store, Cavender store right now. I don't think they're going to be carrying any more of those. I don't think they're going to be uh, selling any more of those. So hopefully they're gone because... I'll have to look and see if they're doing it at our local store. It's been a couple of weeks since I've been in. But that's interesting. Horrible hat. So I didn't know that they made the Cavendish yes, hat and, either. Um, I've got... Yep. Do you know who produces the Rafter Sea hats? I don't. I don't. I think there's it their is, own it brand. It is Cavendish brand. Rafter Sea is Cavendish. But I don't I know they produce who's... their own shirts. I have a couple of their shirts. The, the shirts are made <laughs> Or, yeah. Or are they Indonesia? I don't know. Um, I, so, so Rafter C is Cavender's brand. I can tell you in a second. I got a couple. Yeah. Of let's take a look. I don't. I don't own any. Yeah. That Dakota's hat. I'm not even sure where that thing I've was got, made. I've got three of them. Hold on. So you were incorrect on both guesses there. <laughs> in India. They are made in India. Uh, that was my third guess. Yeah. Oh man. I got, I'm gonna have to bleep that out. Yeah. They're interesting, man. They, uh, I bought them at the time when I needed shirts and I could find something that fit, and they fit. But they have such a weird stretch to them that they're just, I mean, they're sitting in the back of my closet. I wore them maybe once or twice a piece, and that's, they're, they're, I found these Eli Cattlemans on eBay, the old 70s and 80s and 90s Eli Cattlemans, man. And they're great shirts. They fit right, and just, I never look you know, back. I really. I heard those Eli Cattlemans are good shirts. I haven't tried them. I, I, I wear. I wear a lot of, well, um, Wrangler. I don't think I own any other Snap shirts. Oh, yes, I do. Um, the Tacovas. I love the Tacovas Snap shirts. Um, my, my issue with Wrangler is they fit very well, but they're too short. I can't tuck them. Really? <laughs> okay. They, they cut off right below my stomach. Right. Well, my, I don't have that problem. But I've got a, such a long torso, too, though, so. What I don't like. They're concealed carry like shirts. It. Yeah. Dude, they're not even long enough for that. If you bend over, you've got everything showing. Have, have you, <laughs> and then I get the issue where the sleeves cut off like here to here. Like you can't even button your sleeves. They're so short. Well, yeah. Uh, oh, this here cinch, they actually come up just a little I, um, bit perfect right so, there. Yeah, see, mine are like right where they need to be. I've got plenty of room. Yeah, three, yeah exactly right up. there. And you got enough room to... You know, I can yeah. move, and they don't kill so, me. So, so a couple exactly. things about that. Yeah. Um, so, so a couple things um, about shirts. Have you guys tried the the Wrangler um, um, uh, denim shirts? Have you tried these? I, I love them, but no, I haven't yet. The, uh, I want to get one. I've got a I've got a few different ones, and I like I like the dark ones. But I mean, you know. Instead of going, you know, you've, you've always got to match it. You can't go full Canadian tuxedo. I can't wear, you know, dark jeans and dark. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, I've, I've got a light one. I wear the light one with the darker jeans. Yep, and I wear. Uh, that only I works wear with the, overalls. <laughs> so I wear the. Don't get me I like to wear the dark ones with, uh, with <laughs> black jeans just because, you know, it, you got you to gotta have that contrast. Otherwise, I might as well throw on a matching jean jacket and do the, the full tuxedo. But um, the, the problem with the Wrangler um, denim shirts is I, I think they make them just as a work shirt. And the hem is, is finished with this horrible um, crosshatch, odd colored stitch. So you cannot wear it untucked. It, you, you have to tuck it in. Otherwise, you have to take it and have it, um, have it hemmed so, so that it looks nice. Um, the other thing is, um, this is the retro, and it's got these. Um, it's like a old style pearl snap. I can't get the sleeves hemmed on these things because I, 
can't find the snaps to match. Now these are the ones you found. You no, said for twelve dollars. Uh, these are ones I got from. I think I got these from Boot Barn a long time ago. Um, but uh, they're all the same. Oh, okay. If you, if you, you know, I mean, if you get one of the older ones, no matter what you get, if you get denim on eBay, they're going to be twenty-five bucks. You know, they're fifty bucks in a store, so you're going to get them half price. Um, but 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 yeah. the denim for some reason is is always going to be more. You're going to get, you know. And you can find a pearl snap cotton or, you know, maybe the uh, synthetic fiber shirt. You can find them anywhere from $4 plus shipping to $18, $16, $18, um, which is still a good deal um, on eBay. And either they're they're very lightly used. Or oh, far off what I have to pay. I usually have to pay 20 to $25. Yeah. Well, and, and you're looking at different sizes, too. So, I mean, you know, maybe they're less, less yeah, size readily available. It's a lot, or it's like a lot more fabric. Yeah, well, th- I mean, that's true, too. But I, I think maybe they're less readily available. Well, the, 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 the biggest thing that bothers me is I have to go up two sizes and what I normally wear to have something that's long enough. So, I mean, this shirt's massive, mm-hmm. massively mm-hmm. loose. But it... Any, anything else I get, the, short, the sleeves are way too short. It, it doesn't go past my stomach. It's just an issue. Mm-hmm. Right. It's crazy. I mean, I got this here medium uh, cinch, and it's weight. It's it's really big on me. But that's, you know, I mean, I, I feel like that's like a shirt that you would wear if you're, you know, riding or, you know, kind of doing a lot of these uh you know, activities like, you know, bull riding and whatnot, you know, because you, you, you need a lot more room so your shirt doesn't pop out of your pants when you're, when you're, when you're trying to, com- you know, complete that eight seconds. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, so what surprises me here recently, the most comfortable thing I've found is Cavenders has had some panhand that are, that are done off the sizing off of the neck mm-hmm. and the sleeve. Right. Like a traditional old school shirt. And uh, they, had, they had a couple that fit me, man, and those things are comfortable. But I can't find them anywhere else. I can't find them on the website, eBay, nowhere I found them. I've only ever found them there, and they had three of them. I bought all three of them while I was there. So there, And they were cheap, dude. They were $22 a piece, brand new. There are a lot of um, pearl snap shirts that are measured that way. A lot of them. Um, I'm trying to think of brand names, but um, I had somebody come in and wanted uh, they wanted to buy a shirt for... A specific person who wasn't there and they said all we need to know is the the neck size is 17 and he needs a 32 sleeve well you know you go to pearl snap and and they are going to be measured similarly at least the neck size is going to be you know you can say i got a 17 then we measure the sleeves and if we're close we're close if not you know at least you got the neck size and it's it's usually 17 and 34 36 but um, but a lot of a lot of pearl snaps are measured that way. And there's a uh, there's a website. I, I'm gonna have to look for it. They all they do is like pearl snaps, like massive pearl snaps. And I think it's like the Gulf Coast of Texas. I forget where they're at. I, I think it's the Gulf Coast. Um, I have to look that up. Yeah, actually, you know, a lot of the shirts that I wear are, uh, I have a few, a, a, a bunch of shirts from Lucchese, and uh, a couple of them are uh, made in the USA, and I thought when I bought the uh, the uh, the other ones, I uh, thought they were going to be made in USA, I'm like, oh man, those are at a great price, and you know, all of a sudden I see Lucchese made in China, right. and uh, there's, their, there's their new line of shirts. Uh, Trying to make everything you cheaper. Know, yeah. And uh, those actually, you know, they, they don't fit me the same. They, you know, the, the sleeves literally on, on the size that I get, which is a small, the sleeves kind of come up like here and then the shirts just, you know, fits perfect. But then, you know, the sleeves kind of come up and I'm like, you know, that, 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 that's messed up. You know, the, the American made shirts and you could feel a difference in, in how well they're made you know, comparing the American ones to the Chinese one, and I'm like, geez, you know, it, it really sucks, but... Uh, so Lionel and I have talked about this before, and I'm a, I'm a huge Lucchese fan, 
And as a matter of fact, I'm wearing uh, I'm wearing Lucchese socks right now, and they they're an amazing pair of boot socks. Am I going to spend the money on Lucchese? I have no idea what they cost. Um, these were given to me, and they're great socks. But I can get three pair of Wrangler uh, boot socks for fifteen dollars, and they're great socks. Um, I'm not going to go out and spend that kind of money on Lucchese socks because they're not that much better. As far as Lucchese shirts go, $190 for a f shirt. $190, I'm going to have to bleep that again. $190 <laughs> for a shirt. Um, I, I'm going to go buy custom. I'm going to have a custom made shirt for that yeah, price. Most and definitely. Everything, everything I want. Um, I've got custom shirts in the closet. And, you know, it's going to be 100 times made in America, uh, measured, made to measure. Um, you know, I think, Initials I think my and everything. threshold. Yeah, absolutely. I think my threshold is about $70. Um, Tacovis is expensive for what they are. Um, I like I like their black and I like their white um, pearl snaps. Uh, they don't have many colors and styles to choose from. Uh, I've got a couple of them. Oh, they have a they have a gray denim. Absolutely love that shirt, and and that was probably the the reason I started buying their shirts. Um, other than that, I'm gonna buy Wrangler, made in America. I mean, it is what it is. You want a button up? Um, you know, you can go to Kohl's and get a button up, or you, you know, I would go to Kohl's and get a button up before I buy. Area it because it's the same thing. Um, I just I don't need to announce Ariat all over me. I don't like their company enough for one thing. They're not sponsoring me. If you want to give me money, I'll wear your shirt all day long. Um, it is what it is. I I've have been, a Ariat shirt. Oh, I, I have an Ariat shirt. The white, uh, just a white one. It's. Uh, it's uh, wrinkle free yeah. uh, from their pro series, mm -hmm. uh, and man, that shirt just fits huge. I mean, I had yes, they're, I, they're I had enormous. to go with the yeah. I'm like that. That's insane. And I had to I literally on that shirt, the right fit for me is the extra small, and I I went ahead and got the extra small. And uh, no, I, I went ahead and got the small because the extra small sleeves just went up like way too high. So I had to get a small and then I had to get the shirt hemmed so it could fit me right or else I would have, that, that small would have been way too big on me. Right, that, that, yeah, I, um, I, I that goes same thing exactly with back to what I was saying about, <laughs> that goes back to what I was saying about the area fishing shirt you know it was it was not only was it um not breathable and uncomfortable and too hot it was enormous you know m my size which should fit comfortably was at least a size or two too big i would need a medium or you know something in in that area shirt and I will say I did see um, either a blue or a white Ariat shirt the other day. Just came in with a Texas flag, so it's, um, it's you know how they put the Ariat down the sleeve. Mm -hmm. and this was done in a Texas flag pattern, so it was pretty cool. I would probably buy that just for that, but in my mind only, I hadn't really pulled the trigger on it, and I probably wouldn't wear it. So I would rather mar I would I would rather buy um, a shirt and and have uh, American Hat Company put on it if I'm going to work, you know, at, at a boot store yep. um, where, I, where I'm going to, you know, Most advertise definitely. something. I'm going to wear I'm gonna wear an American Hat Company shirt. Yep. What do they charge for, for a fishing shirt like that? Area? I've never seen one. Ooh, they are expensive. They are expensive. Um, and I think they're like 70 bucks. Man. I'll, I'll grab one. I've got, I, uh, I bought crazy. two. I bought two and I wore I wore one and I hated it so much I took the other one back. Now, I would have taken them both back if I could. Let me grab it and I'll show you real quick. That's crazy. It's man. funny I, they, I, they, I they, they market themselves as a 
yeah i mean there's so much better shirts you could buy for the money but you know they've become so popular as a as a as a boot brand as a cheap boot brand too you know and and then they're just gonna upcharge your shirt so high just because they got the name behind See, it i would never even think of of Ariat doing anything with a fishing shirt period i mean you can go and get a magellan from academy for twenty dollars yeah exactly shirt can you can you guys oh, see man. this? Yeah. So, you know, Ariat, um, and it's, um, let's see. That doesn't look breathable at all. It's not. It's um, made in Indonesia. Um, yeah, let's see what it's made out of. It's made of. Um, I don't know what it's made of. Probably they don't know either. I don't know. It's got the, um, you know, it's got the venting in the back, and where you would think this would be, you know, quite breathable, this material itself is, it holds heat, and um, the venting is good, but it just doesn't work. It's junk. I mean, I'll never wear that shirt. Yeah, I got a, I wore it twice. a shirt like that from Columbia, and it's much better. Yeah, see, I, I, I wore Columbia, so, and I've got several Columbias, and uh, I tried the Magellans being a lot cheaper, being a $20 shirt. To me, it does a better job on the venting, especially when you're out on, yeah. when you're out on the water and you're not moving, and it gets really warm, and you're, you know, you use a shirt for what it's actually, you know, for the venting purpose. Use for it. And uh, it, it makes a massive difference. <laughs> I took I took a couple of these, and I took a couple of the Magellans with me when I went to Florida, dude. I didn't even touch my Pearl Snap so I was down there. It, it was so yeah. warm. I wear uh, uh. I wear the LL Bean um, Tropic Wear fishing shirts. Mm -hmm. I love them. I have a bunch of them, and I will I would I would much prefer if I'm if I'm out, if I'm not going to work or if I don't need to look, you know, wear cowboy you know uh, pearl snaps or something like that for either work or going out or whatever. If I'm doing my day to day normal type business. I would wear those shirts every day. I wore them when I was on vacation. I wore them every day because they're just so comfortable. They're breathable. They dry super fast. Um, love those shirts. Uh, they're expensive. Um, I think they're in the $60 range also. Um, luckily, L.L. Bean offers a military discount. I get, um, I get them for like, I want to say $45, $50. It, to me, though, worth it all day long. Uh, I don't know where they're made, but Ella Bean's such a great company, and they, you know, they offer such a great product, and their warranty is phenomenal. And these shirts last forever, so I love those. Wrangler, Ella Bean, Tecovis on certain things. Um, you know, I'm a big Tecovis hater, but uh, the shirts are pretty good. I still have to try one of their boots from uh, their regular line because, like I said, I tried on the, I had for a while the Prescott and, man, the 11 and a half was just too tight and the 12 was just too big and, you know, they got that stupid removable insole and it just didn't work out. Yeah. But they got like a, yeah, a, a, a original, uh, like you know, traditional insole on the bottom of that, and it's like you know, if it, you know, it's already big. To begin with, so if you take all that that removable insole, yeah, it doesn't even look I mean, like it actually broke in the right place. It's it's um, you know, it's it's an interesting boot, and I've spilled gasoline on these boots, um, and I have not shined them. I have not added color to them. Um, I have a theory, and this is going to be we're going to talk about this in, in the video um so this this butyl rubber rubber sole that they use it's not butyl rubber it's butyl infused um i keep saying rubber because everybody thinks of butyl rubber it's a it's a butyl um easter that they they impregnate into the into the the leather itself to give it um, stiffness uh, tensile strength uh, wearability waterproofness um I know way more about butyl easter than um, I should know, 
and that anybody is going to care to know about after I'm done with the video. But but you can also infuse, um, you know, the upper with with that butyl, and I think that's what they've done here because this thing is so stiff and unforgiving and just won't break in. Um, <laughs> this, uh, and, and <laughs> spoiler alert, this boot is a more comfortable, roomy boot for somebody who hates square toe. That's all this is, but the weight, I don't know, we're getting off topic here, but you know, it's just, um, where, where did you spill gas on that boot? Uh, so on the way back from um, Tombstone, Arizona, I stopped and got gas. And it's the first time in 35 years I've ever had a gas pump back up on me. And it, it got all over the entire top of both boots. And there weren't wow. any... Um, there weren't any... Um, paper towels there to wipe it off with so I you know I kicked it off and I got right. in the car and we went and grabbed <laughs> right so we went and with the price of gas nowadays that boot's probably worth more than it ever did <laughs> yeah probably still smell like gasoline now um, yeah, I mean, that intoxicating you know, leather or uh, that intoxicating more. gasoline smell <laughs> yeah right oh Another thing I'm going to go into is that that leather smell that everybody loves so much is really chemical. It's not leather. It's because of uh, so Tecovis uses uh, Tecovis uses a um, uh, a Chrome XL leather pull-up leather, and that smell that everybody smells when they open a box of Tecovis is not the same smell you're going to smell if you open a box of um, uh, Lucchese. And that's because Tecovis uses a cheaper leather, which is Chrome XL treated and Chrome XL tanned, and and your what you're smelling is chemicals. It's not not leather. Yep. Um, but it does smell. Good. I brought over the uh, that Nakona deal I was talking to you about. Oh yeah. I want to show you guys. That's this. Uh, I got a. I stole these from my Tecovis that I returned, by the way. <laughs> We're gonna get a charge back from Tacovas tomorrow morning yeah, when they see the video. Yeah, they're gonna charge you for a whole pair of boots now. Yeah, they're gonna be like, "Hey, man." Um, but uh, yeah, this is the Nakonas now. Uh, these are um, that's their uh, specialty ones. Uh, that you know, well, they're a lot of their boots are made in USA, but this is uh, kind of like a specialty model that they have. And uh, this is supposed to be all calf skin. Now, this is, I mean, it does feel soft, but it feels like it's, uh, it's also like super tough. So that doesn't really feel like, you know, what, what, what a good calf skin boot is supposed to feel like. And uh, they're extremely tight, I gotta say. I might have to go get these stretched out, but I mean, they're supposed to be all calf skin, but man, they're, they are tough as hell. Uh, and uh, but they are nicely made boots and uh, very good boot for your like I said your wedding and you know kind of these very formal occasions that you know you don't want to wear something too flashy or uh, you know uh, but um, they're, they're very they're very uh, they're not supple at all you know uh, they yeah, feel very tight for, uh, and I don't know if that's down to the the fact that they're, you know, the tanning that they use in the back and whatever, but it feels like that's what it is, because it, it it kind of flares over the top of the boot, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and that's something you know maybe we can look at down the road is um, different boots and and different dyes and and see what's what's gonna cause something like that clay have you got any um have you got any idea what you're gonna what kind of boots you're gonna wear for your wedding i know you you talked about uh you know a 500x american for your hat Good and you gotta match boots with it you gotta you gotta have some really really hot boots with that i know i know we've got uh we, we're about two and a half hours into it now and and clay needs to run and and 
we're going to wrap it up soon, but uh, just really quick, what, do you, what are you thinking? Uh, I'm not 100% sure yet. I'm definitely going to get something custom made. Uh, definitely going to look into a couple nice. companies. Definitely going to look into the company that we talked about here and uh, see, see what I'm going to have made. Okay. All good right, sounds good. Man. All right, so do you guys have any last thoughts before we wrap it up? Um, I do have one vest from Ariat, by the way. We're talking about, you know, like different things from Ariat. And uh, one thing I, I could say that I do like from Ariat is that vest. Uh, let me go ahead and grab it. Well, while he's grabbing that, I'll just say I pr appreciate the invite, Joe. And I know it took us forever to get everything set up and try to get times together for all of us. And then, you know, I'm glad Lionel was able to join us, man. It was, it's been a great time. I appreciate it. Yeah, me too, and um, I appreciate you making it happen and, um, and spending the time with us. Um, I think it's something we should probably do more regularly. Uh, people are going to enjoy this, I think, and even if they don't, um, well, somebody's going to like it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Definitely would love to, to come back. And, and, and you know, we had fun doing it. Oh, yeah, man, it was a good time, man. I hate to run, but yeah, three, three comes early in the morning. <laughs> nah, no problem. I, I hear you, I hear you, and, you know, um, we're, I think we could probably sit here and talk boots for another hour at least, boots and hats. Oh, at least. Uh, you know, I, I look down, I look down, I see we've been recording for at least two and a half hours, and, you know, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so, we'll see what, we'll see what Lionel, uh, Lionel has to say about his best here in a minute. Yeah, see what he, we'll see what he scavenged up here. I thought I lost yeah, him so for a second with the best. background there. Huh? <laughs> Thought we lost you. Oh no, I'm here. Okay, so here it is. You. It's a really nice vest. See, it's like one of these puffed uh, deals. It's kind of, it's like a dark brown, but it's it's cool because it reverses, and it's actually a really nice quality. Now this one is made in. Uh, where did they say they made it? And you know the funny thing is, I saw you had that vest, they did. and I, I'm not a fan of vests. Um, but when you posted that vest, I don't know six months ago or so, I liked it so much. I went out and I bought one, but I I bought um, I bought uh, Carhartt instead. The area? Oh, you mean the area one, right? That's that's what I no, had. I bought the Carhartt. I, 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 I yeah, the Carhartt vest with the, the Sherpa on the inside, man. Yeah, Winter yeah. It makes a big difference. Yeah, no, it definitely does. Like I wore this one all throughout Las Vegas. You, yeah, you bought the, the Carhartt version of this, right, Joe? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I bought. Right. I like yeah. I liked Lionel's vest so much, I went out and found it in Carhartt. <laughs> yeah, man, that puff jacket, man, it just it always looks good. And I actually also brought over the uh, the American uh, sorry the Lucchese, uh shirts. Uh, I brought the. Uh, American made one and the Chinese made one just so you guys can see the difference actually funny enough I remember now that I was able to fit fun in one of the medium ones the American made ones and this is a Chinese made one here but you could see kind of the difference in the quality and, and everything but well it's kind of hard to see the quality difference in on, on video but uh yeah they, you know they this is the American made ones right here and uh, they got this whole deal that says uh, where does it say it? somewhere on the shirt it says made in the USA um, but uh, see this is their Chinese one and it, it you know this is a small and it fits me really weird Big old 1883. <laughs> yeah. Made in China. Uh, yeah, you know, it. you can't have nice things anymore. All right, guys. So, yeah. um, Clay, you got anything you want to say before we cut out? <laughs> no. Yeah, he's talking about he, you know, you saying you can't have anything nice anymore, man. I, I think every time I turn around, something's made in China now. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 
Uh, you it's know, I mean, it's it just is. it's crazy at one hundred ninety dollars for a shirt that you know is going to be made in in China. You know what I mean? It's like, man, Not at least buddy. keep that in the USA. Nope, I ain't the one. And that's Lionel. And and that's just saying What's something the... for the boots. Yes. You know, hopefully they don't start taking that over there. Lionel, tell us what uh, what's your next video coming out real quick before we take off. Oh, good question. Uh, you know what? It's supposed to be done on Wednesday, and I haven't even thought about which topic I'm going to be talking about. I know that uh, I got some uh, JW boots coming in. Spoiler alert, they're going to be uh, Stingray boots with, uh, with a deer shaft. Nice. So those are going to be pretty badass. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll we wait. look forward to seeing that. Me, I know, uh, I know I've been promising them, but uh, I've got them all right here. So I'm not, and they're not leaving my uh, my studio until I get them done. Uh, I've got the uh, Lucchese um, uh, elephant uh, trilinguas. I've got the uh, Tacovis Prescotts, and what else do I have? I had something else. That might be it. There's something else. I forget. Oh, the Ariats. I got the Ariat review to do, so those are my next ones coming out. Um, and obviously, this video is coming out soon. So, thank yep. you guys for joining me today, and really enjoyed the talk. Um, get some sleep. I know yep, it's getting same. late, especially for you guys. Oh my God, oh, well. it's like 11:30 for you guys. Yeah. All right. We're on Easter. Appreciate it. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Take it easy. Mm -hmm.